What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 138 of the Games and Grabs podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I'm here, as always, with Finn Steele. Hello. And Steve. Hello. And we're excited to be here for another week. We've got uh, an action-packed week coming up next week, so... uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to get sick of us, guys. You mm-hmm. really are. Yes. Like we've gone if you're from, not already. Yeah, we've gone from not doing like much at all, <laughs> like just sticking an episode out whenever, to being everywhere all the time. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we're on social media all the time. We're, on, we're doing a podcast every week. Yeah. We're doing pre-shows. We're killing 2021. Yeah, we are. This is our year. This yeah. is it. Finn, your beard is looking like pretty impeccable today. It must be said. It's getting, it's getting there. Yeah, I don't need it. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it is good. It's, it's like thick. <laughs> thick indeed. T h i c c. Yeah. See, this is why I prefer <laughs> you, like, with the face on camera, because, like, I get to see the uh, the majesty that is your beard and <laughs> amazing fringe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got, got to look me- the messy fringe. Oh yeah, I'm here for it, Finn. Yeah, I'll try and comb it, and then like ten minutes later, it's messy again. So it's like, well, I can't even <laughs> begin to think what you look like without it now. Yeah, it's not good. Even I can't. You know, I'll try and <laughs> I come I come out the shower and just like, mm, no, <laughs> it doesn't look like me anymore. I think you should straighten it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Maybe see one day. how long it is. See yeah. how, long it, how far. I bet. Cause, yeah. Oh, when I yeah, when I comb my hair, when I come out the shower, it's literally like down here, below my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> people would pay good money for the kind of hair that you've got. Yeah, yeah. People tell me now. People probably, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm lucky. I've got really thick hair. And my dad's my dad's bald. And he's always like, "Hi, oh, too jealous of your hair." I'm like, yeah. Hey, be. you've got plenty. Just cut some off <laughs> yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just yeah just I'll make a big out of my hair. Yeah. Like <laughs> next, his next birthday, just be like, "Happy birthday, Dad." Here's a card. Uh, your presents inside the card, and he opens it. And just <laughs> with your lots fall yeah. out of the card. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Uh, I mean, I, that's a great present. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hi, Finn's dad. Hi, hello. I know he listens to this sometimes. So hi, hi, Dad. <laughs> I'm surely he doesn't listen to this. He does sometimes. Why? Oh, well, I don't know why oh, anyone dear. listens to this. But... <laughs> I don't know. I think just yeah. I don't know. <laughs> now I know that your dad listens to this. I'm going to be conscious every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, we, we, we say something absolutely terrible. Yeah. <laughs> which is almost every week. No, no more swearing. Uh, yeah. Which is pretty much impossible for us. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty certain your dad's like, here's the intro, and then here's the first dick joke. He's like, yep, that's enough for me. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't enough. think I'll be listening to this anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then when you go, oh, hey, dad, um, how was the how, how, how did you find the podcast this week? He'd be like, yeah, it was really good. Really, really enjoyed it. Just lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we liked it. Yeah, we liked the part with the video games and the wrestling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you, your mum was very fond of the penis jokes. That you <laughs> really, really, ta- really, <laughs> really tasteful penis jokes. Yeah, yeah. Going on there, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Steve, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah, not too bad at all. Thank you very much. Glad for some you? days off. Good yeah, I'm good. Oh, I'm just glad for yeah. some days off. Yes, yes. I've got uh, next week off. Weather-wise, I picked the wrong week, but, you know, mm-hmm. I've got crystal ball. But... Um, yeah, got all the next week off because it's half term, not just because of the wrestling, but it fell perfectly. That's and why then, I've got uh, it off. A nice. couple of days off <laughs> for uh, the week after that for recovery. Yeah. So, it. WrestleMania recovery. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I would, I would you don't need it. It's fucking stacked two, that week. Two, night, two nights of it. I'm just going to, yeah. My well, next Monday, I'll just be a mess. Yeah. I'll be wrestling out. Like by the end of Monday. next week, I mean, it's absolutely lunacy the amount of wrestling that's on next week. It's crazy. It's mad. This, this be every day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I mean, I've already, I've already made. Uh, we'll come on to it for, for it's for other reasons, but I've already made a conscious decision. I'm probably not going to watch Raw next week because <laughs> no one will blame you. A, a, it's shit, and B, there's enough going on that week. I don't need weekly TV. No, I don't need it. Yeah, well, I think, you know, the best thing to do is to just, like, Twitter or Facebook the results. Because yeah, that's probably do. better I'll... than watching it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, adulting is, is hard. Adulting has, like, become really hard. I think these last couple of weeks of, um, like, lockdown and stuff, I think they've been the most difficult. Just in general, think... not, like, from a wrestling perspective. Yeah, easily, yeah. 
I mean, we were talking about it at work, like saying how difficult these last couple of weeks have been. I think it's just starting to take its toll, if you mm. know what I mean. Really badly now. I yeah. think because the end's in sight, and now we're like sort of trying to get there, but it's getting progressively more difficult. Yeah, like, I know. I know that we're super deep into it. Yeah, as I say, the you know, lockdown is technically ending soon, and you know people are getting the vaccine. It's like we're so close, but so far. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, it, it it worries me seeing what we're seeing as well with the way people are behaving as well. You just think you just it's just going to be extended, guys. Yeah. You know, the anti vaxxers are out just in force. Fucking yeah. behave. Well, it's not even that. It's just idiots that are like, oh, we can go down the park now. Let's have a fight. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, like grow up for fuck's sake. I'm glad it's. I'm glad. In fact, I'm glad the weather's shit next week, so it stops people going out. Yeah, same. Yeah, so it's supposed yeah, to snow next to... week. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I heard that. Well, so, nice yeah. the day. I know. Like I say, people are coming in by the, the beer. Off. Yeah, yeah. But hey, yeah. Like I say, ends in sight. Let's be positive. Yeah, so. the end. The end is definitely in sight. Um. Yeah, it is. The end is in sight. I think it's because, you know, uh, the job I do is difficult. Mm. Um, and when you do it on your own, like working from home or, you know, we're going in the office, but it's like, you know, one at a time. So when you're doing the job on your own, usually you would have like people to bounce off and, you, you know, you, you get through it all together. But now yeah. I think because it is getting tougher and, you know, we are on our own, I think that's what's making it a bit more difficult. So it's nice to, it's nice to have this on a Saturday to do. Yeah, to, yeah, to like interact it, yeah. with with other people and um, yeah, it's a good time. And if you you know, if you, I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat. So you know, I don't want to you know fill your fill the podcast with moaning, but <laughs> you know, if you are in the same boat, you know, we're here for you. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're not you're not on your own with it. Basically, I know, you know, it's been going on for a long time now, but you know, it's still there. It is still there, and things aren't changing at the minute. Yeah, well, they are, but slowly but surely, we're getting there. We are getting there. Right, let's move on to more positive things. Let's uh, crack on with our regular podcast. Lots to cover this week, yes. um, including all the stuff that we're going to be doing next week, which we'll come on to you know, later. But yes. for, uh, as we always do, let's start the podcast with this. What are we playing? Finn Steele, <laughs> I'll start with you, my friend. What um, have you been playing? What indeed? I'm jumped into uh, the Outer Worlds DLC. It's been really good so far. Oh, okay. Yeah, been enjoying uh, yeah, playing that again. It's not a good game. What are you uh, playing it on? Are you playing it on PC or are you playing it on PlayStation? Uh, PlayStation. They've released the okay. uh, PS5 patch now, so it runs 60 frames per second. It's very, very nice, nice and smooth. Mm. Um, but yeah, Outworld's so good. There's like so many like parts you can take, so many options. You know, there's so much dialogue in it. Like, like mm. you, you know, choose what option you want to say in dialogue, and you know, they have a response, voice response, so much voice acting. It's you know, so good. So much detail in the world. I love good. so much. Um, so yeah, I've played two lots of DLC. I'm playing through the first one. Uh, I think I'll play about 90% of the way through now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I've been playing War Forza on PC. Nice, you still enjoying it? Yeah, really enjoying it, yeah. Um, PC gaming is the pain in the ass. Sometimes things just go wrong for no reason. Um, so I'm trying to bat my way through that. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's one of those games you don't have to like take seriously. You just kind of Turn it no. on when you got a, bit, got a few, mm. you know, maybe yeah. an hour or two. Just throw yeah, it on. Yeah, that's it. Have a few races and, yeah. Nice chill game. I like it Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah great. great soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Really you know, the driving is, you know, the best in any game. Yeah. There's so much you can do, you can do so much, like the tuning section. I don't look at it because, I, you know, I don't know anything about cars. So I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, same, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll play it on, you know, not not easy, but like normal easy, you know. I'm not, mm. I'm yeah. not a car guy. Um. Yeah, super awesome game. Um, that's about it, really, for this week. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I jumped into Ratchet and Clank again briefly. I probably am going to play it in a bit now because of Insomniac. Yeah, final update. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk more about that later, but yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's about it, really. How about you, Steve? Uh, usual sort of stuff. So, Animal Crossing, been playing that a fair bit over the last uh, couple of days. Awesome. And. Myself, Sonny, and Darren, King of the Melts, mm-hmm. played. We played Sea of Thieves on Wednesday, and it's po- possibly the most disappointed we've ever been <laughs> whilst playing it. You know, it was the words, so bad. <laughs> the words "shit show" come to mind. I mean, our performance. I mean, it was still better than watching Raw, but mm. 
<laughs> for a comparison. Uh, absolutely <laughs> terrible. And, and, you know, I was getting the, as we came off it, I was getting the feeling that, you know, I didn't think we were, I thought we're not going to play this game for a while now. We all went on to Game Pass and started downloading some new games and <laughs> whilst we were on the, on the party chat. But then Thursday we went back in. We felt like we had to redeem ourselves because we were that bad. Uh, yeah. And we had a much better, much better night on Thursday. We still sank, but you know, <laughs> you know, someone still actually peppered our boat. But you know, we we uh, had a good haul, had a good night on it, had a good laugh as well. So that's the main thing. But um, uh, well, yeah, once we were, again, we were pretty bad on on Wednesday. Yeah, we, we were awful. But but again, like awful. it's a case of learning on the job again because we we took on um, a you know a, a decent sized NPC ship. Mm. Um, and then we, we sunk it, and you know they, you know they they carry a shitload of loot. Yeah, you know? what it leaves so, behind is unbelievable. Yeah, and look, so that, that, that opens more things up in the game, and you know we, we're yeah. still learning on the job after all the hours we've put into it over the last. Yeah. You know since well since you got an Xbox, Steve. So since what yeah, November, November when the Xbox yeah. came out. So yeah. over the last six months, we've plowed so many hours into that, and we're still learning. It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's still a great game, and. Um, there's part of me that wishes it was uh, a bit more, uh, a bit easier to play as like a single player. I mean, I, I imagine there's people out there that do it, mm. go out on their own in a boat and do what I wouldn't. I've, I've tried it, but I, I wasn't very successful. But uh, no, I, I, yeah, it's, it's still a great game, and I imagine we'll play, we'll, we'll play it for for many many more hours. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's because I think it's because we threatened it. We were like, right, we're going to find something else to play. The game yeah, somehow yeah, sucked sure. us back in. Yeah, and then, straight um, away. Yeah, and then we, you know, we're straight back in it and having a great laugh again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we owed it to ourselves to to jump we back did. on the next night and. Uh, and we redeemed ourselves. We're now top quality pirates again. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're middling, middling. Um, yeah, okay, that's fair. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I um I downloaded uh, Fractured Minds. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll bet uh, got the nice easy thousand game score on that. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, let's get let's get let's get a round of applause there. Yeah, congratulations. Easy or not, it's a thousand gamers game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is fairly easy. There's a couple of ones that are kind of hidden achievements. You have to, um, you know, they're not they're, they don't appear straight away. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of things you have to do. But no, it was uh, it was good, interesting, different. I'd, mm. I'd want to kind of read up a little bit more about it. It, it seems like an interesting sort of story in terms of it was one person that made it and they yeah. they donated half the money to uh, like mental health charities, I think, and various yeah. other things. So, yeah, I, I want to read a bit more into it and actually, you know, understand it a bit better rather than just, oh, I'm playing this for the, for the game score. But, uh, yeah, that's it for me, really, this week. What about you, Sonny? Uh, I've been playing a few different bits, to be honest. I've, um, I've been playing Football Manager again on Xbox and... Uh, I'm sucking into that deep at the minute. Like I played hours yesterday. No, it doesn't take like, long, does it? No, yeah. and I was just sort of suckered straight back into it, but really enjoying it. Um, I feel like the Xbox version has actually been refined a little bit. Controls seemed a little bit easier, and it doesn't take you long to you know to really get back into the swing of things. So I just picked up my save where I was before and started carrying on with that. Really enjoying it. Um, been playing. More Animal Crossing again. I'm super deep into that as well. Still battling to get my island up to f- uh, three stars, which is um, proving nice. a tall task. If I'm being honest, I'm planting flowers. Mm. I'm watering flowers. My fucking watering can is, you know, running out of uses <laughs> quicker than, you know, quicker than anything. So, um, but I'm still really enjoying it. You know, um, Tom Nook's still a piece of shit. He is, yeah, but um, I've, you know, I've not really interacted with him this week. I've been mugging his two little mates off in the shop, just yeah. selling them crap. Everything that I pick up, going along the beach, picking up garbage, and <laughs> selling it to him. It's great. But at the minute, the bunny event's on, and I don't really yeah. like the bunny event. I think it's a bit crap. Mm. And you know, you, you dig up the eggs, and I don't, you know, oh, you can make a a fucking stall out of an Easter egg, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to sell the eggs. Is it the same as last? Last year, we just you know exactly the same. Oh, that sucks because yeah, it just replaces. I've just been uh, things you want to be normally like dicking them up and selling. Yeah, them. that's all I've been doing. Yeah, like I'm gonna get a fish and instead you get an egg. Just like oh, I don't want an egg. Yep. I want fish. Yeah, <laughs> you think you're digging up a fossil to take to Blathers in the museum? But no, 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 no. It's an egg. Here's, a, here's an egg. Yeah, great. Mm. <laughs> Cheers. There does egg. seem to be there does seem to be less of that. There seems to be more fossils scattered around 
the eggs. So the fossil to egg ratio is a bit more evenly split this this year. But okay. um, yeah, I could still do without it. It's it's crap. There's yeah. better events, definitely. But yeah, so still really enjoying Animal Crossing. Um, Retromania Wrestling is finally out on Switch. Nice. Um, hey. And I, I got my I got my pre order code through the other day because I bought it to support the cause. And it yeah, it's great on Switch as expected. You know, it's. Mm. It plays really well on everything that it's released on so far. PlayStation and iArcade are still to come, but um, you know it's out there in the wild, and you can play it, and it's great. So, cool. Um, yeah, there's that. Last night, I jumped back in out of sheer curiosity uh, to WWE 2K20 oh, on yeah. X- on Series X. How was it? Quick and smoother. That's good. Oh, all right. So it's Basically. actually improved it a great deal. Even Kaylee looked up and she was like, oh, this looks a lot better. I was like, yeah, it really mm. does. It's The textures are better. There's um, less glitchy like graphics with the title belts and the screens. And you know, most importantly, the game loads insanely quick. So you, you're in wow. the title screen, you pick your match, and the game, the it basically loads almost instantly. You're in. Yeah. yeah. So um, I actually enjoyed it. I had a few matches. Um I had a couple of did a couple of WrestleMania bits. I had like Lashley versus Drew, and um, I had um, Roman Reigns versus Edge. And but then uh, you know I had a little fantasy match: AJ Styles versus Tyler Bate. Nice. Um, but nice. all in all, I actually really enjoyed it. You know, the, I didn't get any crap glitches or anything like that. It loaded really quick, so there was none of that. You know, irritation. And yeah, I I just keep it installed on there if I ever want to jump in for a quick match or two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's what it's there for, and it ran and played fine. So, yeah, can't argue with that. Awesome. I hope they get yeah. make a 2K22 this year. It's coming. It's coming. I think they will, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they were, were recording voiceovers, I think. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. Yes, I read that. Yeah. yeah the, doing... When did they do it? Was it uh, uh, the Royal Rumble, Chamber? I think. Yeah, I think it was Rumble, the Royal Rumble, yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah. with the Royal Rumble, there's more people there. So, course, um, yeah. I think they were doing sort of up-to-date face scans and voiceovers mm. for yeah. the new game. Good. Let's hope they've had you know that extra year to work on it. Let's hope you know it shows in the quality. There is no <laughs> way they can bring a game out that's going to get that bad a reception again. Yeah, it needs to be the no. best wrestling game in a long time for, <laughs> for redemption. Um, oh god, yeah. Yeah, they need to bring something good out with the AEW game coming out. I know that's mm. obviously next year now isn't it by the looks of it but yes they need to so that that you know they really need to get ahead of it you know if they they're probably gonna it usually comes out in november doesn't it the 2k uh, the wwe 2k games yeah so yeah. they've yeah they've, they've got a bit of an advantage there that they'll be the first ones out so yeah make sure it's good or as people yeah. just ditch that as soon as the AEW game comes out <clears throat> yeah, yeah clearly um and I, I think they I think they know this as well. I think they know that mm. they have to really knock it out of the park this year. There's a lot to change. I mean, career mode, or well, the story mode for um, like your created wrestler was abysmal. Oh, so bad yeah. on two K twenty. Like I, as, even if I wanted to go for the thousand gamer score, I couldn't because it's so bad. Yeah, the voice oh, acting no. as well. Just the animation, the voice acting is so bad. Oh my Gosh, god, it's all really bad. Yeah, really so bad. bad. But you know there was there, there are there are good qualities in them games, you know uh, the character yeah. models always look for the most part fantastic. Mm. Um, there's they they do things that make the game seem good. Like I like the in like triple threat matches and, and like multi man matches. Like once a pl- once a one of the wrestlers is sort of taking a bit of a beating, they'll roll out the ring, uh, do yeah. a bit of recovery, and then you, the match can continue in the ring. And I like that; it's a nice touch. Mm. Um, yeah, I, th- I always think the strikes look really good, like the the uh, with the way that they do the connections and stuff. And um, you get like wrestlers that do a lot of combo striking, like Nakamura and AJ Styles. I feel like their strikes are always really well animated. So there are good mm. qualities about the game. The, but 2K20, when it came out, it just felt um, rushed and it, it, it just came with a lot of negativity mm, and it never really recovered, you know, despite the patches and all that sort of stuff. It never recovered from that initial reaction. Um, and it's a shame because in there, there is a good wrestling game, but it's just marred by so many, uh, you know, poor qualities. And that, that's what really let it down. And that's why, you know, the, there was not there wasn't a 2k21 yeah but hopefully yeah. you know with 2k22 they'll redeem themselves and i do look forward to seeing what they come out with this year 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, same. Yeah, they need, they the one big a... thing for me with wrestling games, uh, WWE games especially, is how out of date it is when it comes out. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, it's a it's a massive bugbear of mine as well. I think I remember one of the early pods I came on as a guest, and I think I ranted for a good half an hour about it. You know, because <laughs> I saw the trailer and I was like, I think it might have been what what would it have been, two K eighteen maybe, and and I saw the trailer for it. I was like, well, it's out of date already. Yeah, that's the problem. The things you have know, changed yeah. so quickly in WWE that by the time you've you know made and finished everything else, it's totally changed. All the tag teams broken up, and the rest of them have yeah, debuted and things. They like that. do. That that is true. Wrestling does move on very quickly. Storylines change, but Sonny, you've said it a million times. They can give basketball players the most up to date <laughs> trainers. True. Mm-hmm. On the uh, <laughs> on, <laughs> on um on the two K games, so yeah. on the NBA games, so why not? Uh, why can't they do these little tweaks in uh, in the wrestling game? True, very true. Like even 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 little things like adding audio, like for uh, entrance musics, and you know the Titan Trons aren't exactly uh, you know breaking the mold these days. They're literally just words on a screen. So yeah, um, yeah. Look, I get it. It's it, wrestling does evolve very quickly, and things do change very quickly um, because you know you've got the 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 mind of a, a crazy old madman. <laughs> you know, working behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just, yes, you've got the, you know, you've got like the creator, the creator wrestler option and all that sort of stuff. But just allow us to edit what's already there. Like literally edit what's in the game already. Don't mm. make us create a whole new version of that wrestler <laughs> to then import it into the game because that makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. Just it's... allow us to to edit what is already there. I mean, you know, No Mercy allowed for that and WrestleMania 2000 allowed for it. And so, and that didn't, you know, cause any detriment to the game itself. In fact, you know, it made your enjoyment better because, you know, you could do that. You could up, you mm. could update it and make it different. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot to work on. They know that. Um, and hopefully this year we'll, we'll see a, a vastly improved WWE game. Yeah. I feel like all those things could be, you know, easily fixed with like a day one patch or you know, patches as the game goes mm-hmm. on. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully they pick something out because they need it. Yes, yeah. they need a redemption. Oh, one hundred percent, they do definitely. Mm. Um, so I'm look, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how they progress with that this year for sure. And um, I know we've been talking about it for a while, but uh, I've been playing Outriders as well. Uh, yeah, um, it? I like it, but at the same time, it sucks a little bit. <laughs> I, I like it. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I like it. Question mark. I, it's one hundred percent my kind of game, but there's something about it that is just a little bit crap. Yeah, I get that. Um, and I, I can't put my finger on what. Look, okay, look, the character animations are pretty awful. They they look like they're from uh, the PS3. <laughs> nice. Um, but the, the the world itself is actually beautiful. Like really, really nice. The textures are great. You know, a lot of stuff to look at, and it's it's really nice. But there's just something about it that sucks, and I can't put my finger on what. Now I had a conversation with somebody on Twitter yesterday, um, and they were basically just saying, you know, stick with it because it it does get a lot better. You go to different environments, interact with different things, and you're killing different types of enemies, and it's you know, it does get a lot better. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to stick with it. But at the minute, like the game starts. You like go to this like paradise where you're gonna you know re, you know recreate Earth, or start life again basically. You're gonna bring people out of cryo, and you know you're gonna pick up where you left off from Earth when Earth got destroyed. Okay, cool. cool. The people that you play as are in the game about ten fucking minutes before a storm comes and causes all types of shit <laughs> and fucks everything up straight away. But you've not even been there that long. <laughs> yeah. Like, how did you? You haven't done any research on this place that you're going to. <laughs> Just land, see some grass, and be like, "Oh yeah, this is the this is the place. <laughs> this is this is the place for me." This is fine. Yeah, there was no no sort of uh, red flags when you walk over the the first hill, and the like the the animals that are running around are absolutely enormous. <laughs> yeah, we can do all those. You know, you know just shoot them. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just it's a it's a weird game. Yeah. And then you know, after the storm, you you start getting superpowers. Because, oh. you know, it's a looter and you need superpowers. Um, yeah, and it just all happens so quick. There's no real fleshing out of anything in yeah. the early goings of the game. It's like, uh, right, 
here you are. You're going to start a new life. Wait, now there's a storm. Wait, now you're a superhero <laughs> and you're not wearing shoes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I saw some uh, um, something earlier saying there's like a bug that wouldn't let like PS4 and PC players play together, uh, which apparently they're trying to fix now. But it's it's like a, a really good shit game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know like exactly the, what you mean. The, the, the combat is awesome. Yeah. Like the gunplay is amazing. Yeah. Like I even found myself using a sniper rifle yesterday, and I don't use sniper rifles in games. It's just <laughs> not how I like to play. But yesterday, I had one. I was like, oh, okay, let's see how this works. And it worked really well. Um, the combat in general is actually is, is really, really good. But there's something about it that is just really shit. Thankfully, I haven't had to pay for it because it was on Xbox Game Pass. Fairness. Which, you know, instantly makes life a lot better. Which, you know, gives you yeah. that sort of, okay, this game is good, but it sucks, but I haven't paid for it, so it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great thing about Game Pass. It's like, hey, if I don't like it, don't matter. I don't pay anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So yeah, I've been playing Outriders. I'm going to stick with it. I'll report back again on the next podcast that we record and um, see how I feel about it then. Yeah, I think it's. I'm st- I think I'm still going to have the same reaction to it. It's good, but it sucks. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't turn into <laughs> another anthem. That's yeah dead now. Because I don't know if you heard, but they were working on like something called Anthem Next, which is going to be like a big update to fix everything. But I've been cancelled yeah. now. It's just all just been yeah. Binned. Is Which is a real shame because shame. the mechanics behind Anthem were really good. Well, we mm. played it a little bit, didn't we? Oh, you know, it's it's a looter, and it's you know, but the shooting was great. the The idea behind like the the armor, uh, the what were they called, javelins, oh, yeah. um, was great, and you know that you could fly around like Iron Man, and it was cool, and the environments were great, but it was just a little bit shallow. Beyond the story, the end game stuff, there wasn't really much going on beyond that. I think that's why they put it on Game Pass to give a bit more accessibility to it for people who are maybe on the fence a little bit. Mm. And I, you know, I think that's 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 definitely the reason it's gone onto Game Pass, just simply for that reason. Uh, spin froze. Yep. He's You're back. back. Thanks, You're back. Yeah. Good old internet. I'm back. I'm better, I'm better than, ever. than ever. All right. I think it's over now. We're good. <laughs> there we go. Well, to be fair, I mean, we've managed to, we, we papered over the cracks there. We, yeah. we did it. It's all, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if you heard what I said, Finn, because, you know, modern technology. But uh, I said that I think that probably the reason that Outriders is on Game Pass is to uh, maybe sort of bring more more people to it straight away whereas people were instantly on the fence about anthem and you yeah, know weren't true. really sure what to make of it very true but yeah it, it's there if you've got game pass there's no reason for you to not play it because it's there and you can play it and if mm. you not have to pay anything for it whereas if you've got a playstation you'd probably be a bit more on the fence for it mm. because you've got to pay 60 quid um so yeah the that's that's pretty much what i've been playing this week really cool good stuff but I will definitely report back about Outriders and how I'm feeling about it. Awesome. Cool. Um, right. Gaming Before news. we move on to games of the month, mm. we've got a bit of gaming news to talk about, I think. We do indeed. A few bits and pieces. Um, first one I've got here is the PlayStation Plus games for April have been announced and will be out very soon. Yep. Um, the first one is Days Gone for PS4. Great game. Uh, a bit weird. Long. Cause, cause it's very long. Considering it's uh, out now in the PlayStation Plus collection for PS5, um, mm-hmm. but I get it. It's you know PS a lot of guys who don't have a PS5 yet, so this is good for them. Obviously, many um, people don't have a PS5. Many though. many people don't have a PS5. It's in every single fucking comment <laughs> section that's going. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I, I would love a PS5. If you could actually buy one. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Days Gone um, is a great game. I do want to play it eventually, and I will. Um, what else we got? Oh, I've got Oddworld Soulstorm for free if you have been better than Bless on PS5. Free! For free! For free! I can't wait for that. Um, also, I'm looking forward to playing that, yeah. Yeah. Also said, if you buy the PS4 version, you get the free upgrade to the PS5 version, which is nice. What's that for? That's for Oddworld. So if you, if you, if oh, you okay. buy the PS4 version, you get a PS5 version for free, essentially, later on. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. When you actually manage to get a PS5. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> when you can get one. 
Uh, and the other game was yeah, <laughs> the other game was a uh, Zombie Army Four, which I haven't heard of, but is a zombie shooter and looks pretty okay, pretty decent. You never heard of that? No. <laughs> No, yeah, um, I, I, I have heard out. of it, and I was thought, oh, that looks interesting. They'd never play it. Yeah, it's like sort of the Left 4 Dead kind of thing. Um, I don't know. Because of a four player co op. I have genuinely no idea. Yeah, it's four player co op. Co op. Co op. You know, shoot up. zombies, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, some good games there. Very much looking forward to oh, playing. Man, the games with gold are absolute bullshit this month again. <laughs> oh, are they? I haven't even looked at my list. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll keep forgetting that's a thing awful. because of Game Pass. I keep forgetting that like, yeah, they've got their own Game of Gold thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll never look at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crap. The, I mean, the last few months have been absolutely abysmal, really. <laughs> that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Um, also, we talked about it briefly earlier. Uh, Insomniac, the bastards, not even, what, two weeks since I beat Ratchet and Clank. Uh, they've now released the Pleasers 5 update, so it can run at 60 frames a second. Because of course I have, because I couldn't, this couldn't just bring it out a couple weeks earlier. Bah. No, no, not at all. <laughs> the bastards. It's like Crash uh, as well, isn't it? Like that, the uh, the like the PS5 upgrade came out just after you'd finished it. Um, yeah, but that would mean I'd have to play um, both versions again for both Platinums. I don't know. I'm not sure how it works, but yeah. So that was fine. Um, but yeah, I said last week I wasn't going to go for the Platinum, but I probably will now, because so, you know, I want to check out the 60 frames a second uh, mode. It feels yeah. very smooth, very nice. Mm. Um so yeah, very welcome uh, update for that. Um, what else? Oh, so we got there was something else. Like, uh, I forgot what it was. Um, MLB the show uh, is coming to Game Pass on day one, and people are yeah, crying. <laughs> that was the other thing I was going to talk about. Yep, uh, coming day one to Xbox, Xbox Game Pass. There you go. Um, and yeah, formerly a PS Playstation exclusive, now on Xbox. Um, yeah, big deal. Very huge cool, deal. huge deal. Very popular yeah. um, game franchise now available everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. obviously here, <laughs> Microsoft have thrown a shitload of money at Sony to allow this to be on Game Pass. I mean, it's a big I, deal, big yeah. big deal. I don't think Sony had much say in it. To be honest, I think they threw a lot of money at MLB and the developers, and Sony didn't really have much of a choice. And there you go. Um, so yeah, that's very cool for baseball fans and Xbox owners everywhere. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I, I'm terrible at these games, but because it's on Game Pass, I'm definitely gonna try it. Yeah. Why so not? once again, it's that yeah. thing of, you know, it's a new franchise to Xbox, and instantly it's bringing more eyes to that franchise. Yeah. Awesome. By by being accessible on day one for free. Now, for look, free. I, I I get it, right? If you're a PlayStation fanboy, you know, and they exist, let's not pretend they don't. Um, yep. You know, you're. You 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 know you you probably were wondering well you know what about us why aren't we getting you know this for free why aren't we getting this it's like the simple reason is if it's a PlayStation exclusive you're just going to buy it anyway but this is very much an a an, an American market thing oh yeah oh yeah big time yeah yeah PlayStation Now isn't the subscription model that Xbox Game Pass is PlayStation Now is for you know games that have run their course and then you know you can go on and you can play them on PlayStation now if you haven't already. Yeah. yeah. Um you know people getting their ass in their hands about this and you know saying oh Xbox or what whoever is trying to you know monopolize gaming by throwing money all over the place and all that sort of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not that is it? It's not like your precious God of War or Uncharted or anything like that is all of a sudden being gobbled up by Microsoft and you know they're going to be on Game Pass day one because that isn't the case. This is a game that most PlayStation owners do not buy. Mm. True. This is yeah. a very niche game. Just because it's a PlayStation exclusive doesn't mean that you know, the, the PlayStation fanboys of the world are out there by scooping it up day one because they're not. True. So uh, pe pe people buy... MLB the show every year because they're baseball fans. Yeah, and baseball as a sport isn't big, isn't that big outside of yeah. I think it's fairly big in Japan and 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 uh, whatnot. But outside of that, 
It's yeah. not. It's not like NFL. NFL is massive everywhere. It's big in this country even now. It's you not know. like FIFA. If it was FIFA going on no, no, past no. day one, exactly. and yeah. p- people would kick fucking off. And yeah, that's that a I could understand a totally. Game. Yeah, MLB isn't a worldwide game, is it really? No, no, it isn't. And it's not. It's. Is, is it big news? Yeah, of course it's big news. It's yeah, a PlayStation it's Studios it's game coming onto Xbox for the first time, and it's on Game Pass. Great, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's not like but it's going, the... going anywhere. It's like I think people are scared it's going to be like a Bethesda thing. Like people don't know if Bethesda games are going to be like one hundred percent exclusive to Xbox. Like, are we going to get Elder Scrolls Six on PlayStation? We don't know yet, and people are just you know worried that one day you know, Microsoft's and just going to own everything. Um, but well, yeah, that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> not then, then, be then, anyway. Buy an Xbox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you're gonna, if, if Microsoft own everything one day, you're going to have to buy an Xbox. It's yeah. as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, tough. <laughs> but, you know, it's not going to affect the PlayStation ecosystem in oh, any way. God. No, People no. who want to play MLB will still buy MLB. Yeah, yeah exactly. Gonna still, right. You're going to be spending the same amount of money buying MLB as if, you know, if it wasn't on Xbox. So who cares? <laughs> Your life yeah. is being changed that with it being on Xbox. Anyway. Yeah, it's not. It's not going. It's not making a difference at all. All it's doing is bringing more eyes to the game. Exactly. Which is and good thing. you know, games aren't on Game Pass forever. So eventually, you probably are going to have no. to buy it. Yeah. So basically, what you're getting it's is true. a rental for as long as it's on Game Pass, and then if you want to buy, it, you can buy it at twenty percent off before it goes off Game Pass. Yeah, exactly. it's not going to cause any adverse business for Sony because the exclusives for PlayStation still far outweigh those on Xbox. And it will that will always be the case, most likely. Yeah. Because, again, of the aforementioned God of War, um, Uncharted, Gran Turismo. Yeah, Forza's better, but Gran Turismo. Um, you know, the, the list goes on. You know, Ratchet and Clank, Horizon, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. yeah. The list yeah. goes on. <laughs> If you're that fucking bothered about baseball, which you're not, you're just kicking up a storm on the internet for no reason, then why don't you just buy MLB The Show on PlayStation and show your support for it? Yeah. That's the long and short answer. It's happened. It's happened. We're going to get to play MLB The Show. I'll play for five minutes and uninstall it because I suck at it. (laughs) But this is... with, With Bethesda, Microsoft bought that studio so that's now part of xbox game studios mm-hmm. if you know that this is this mlb the show being on game pass could very well be a sweetener to allow bethesda games to be on playstation platforms yeah yeah you maybe. don't know do you yeah could be any 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 deal could be in the in the background couldn't it yeah everybody's making assumptions for things that they have absolutely no idea about we don't know what the business decisions are going to be made. Who saw MLB The Show go into Game Pass Day 1? Yeah, nobody. Three days ago. You know, this was announced yesterday. Yeah. Three days ago, everyone was like, oh, MLB The Show's coming to Xbox. Cool, I might buy it, I might not. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know enough about baseball. Yeah. Three days later, it's, oh my God, Microsoft are killing the business or whatever. <laughs> killing the business. This is so stupid. <laughs> like, you can't control it. Your games are still going to be there. You're still going to be able to play them. You know? Yeah. Why, why are you that bothered by it? Why are people that bothered? Yeah, it's mental. Like the gaming industry is just going to fucking fade away into the abyss <laughs> because of a fucking baseball game. Yeah. It's going to crumble, mate. What are you on about? That's it. <laughs> it's fucking curtains. Yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll all be blowing the dust off our Mega Drive soon. <laughs> yeah, that's Get it. Then back out the cupboard. Oh, oh I'll yeah, play. Cause... I'll play the old Doom. <laughs> yeah, play uh, I'm not signing with Microsoft and playing Doom on an Xbox. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, shut up. Just enjoy gaming. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's so, video well, games. Bill, Gates, he is, Bill Gates, he has got a lot to answer for. He's yeah. taken baseball away from fucking PlayStation <laughs> and he's putting chips into our vaccine so he knows what we're doing every <laughs> single day. Fuck you, Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Steve Watkins story is going on to Game Pass soon because of the vaccination. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That won't take long to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Game Pass is so good, but I can't play because I've got a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play the Steve Watkins Origin. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Elder Scrolls Online, but 
<laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, <wow. sighs> Good times. <laughs> Great times. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking baseball, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> it's baseball. Yeah, I'm going to download it because I can. Fuck yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a fanboy of either. You know, I would, you know, when, when the Xbox came out, I was like, I was saying to you, I was like, yeah, but. PlayStation's going to have, you know, I feel like it has better exclusives. I'm going to, you know, and, and you were like, yeah, but Game Pass. I was like, all right, sound, yeah, I'll get that. Oh, and it's <laughs> 250, and the console's 250 quid, yeah, bonus. Look, I'll own a PS5 one day. I don't fucking bother. I don't, don't care what I play, as long as I enjoy it. Yeah. Stop That's being such people, a fanboy, people. Get, people. People get way too invested in all this stuff, like all these business dealings. Like, oh, Game Pass can't be sustainable for forever. It's like, well, it's done a pretty good job over the last couple of years that it's existed. <laughs> Hasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Microsoft are losing money. No. And Sony are no. making shitloads of money from sales of PS5s and their exclusives are selling. So in what world is... Like, you just don't know. You don't know how much money these companies have got. You know... If they don't think it's sustainable, then it wouldn't be a thing, would it? No, yeah. no, you're right. It's it, it just the mind boggles why people get so invested and care so much about something they have absolutely no control over. Yeah, I saw um, someone that Sony was quoted as saying, you know, Game Pass, you know, we're going to do anything like Game Pass because it's not, you know, sustainable. It's like a few years ago. And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> it turns out you're wrong. Game Pass is huge and everywhere and people love it. Yeah, so, hmm. Square Enix, Outriders, The Octopath Traveler, stuff like that. There's obviously money to be made by these studios, you know, and there's obviously something in it for Microsoft as well, because otherwise they wouldn't do it. Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Sony ended up doing something sort of similar. Because they're playing Gatchup at the minute, and I know I've got the PlayStation Plus collection. And, um, yeah, they're bringing out a couple, you know, free games every month with PlayStation Plus. Hmm. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the line we see something kind of similar on Sony. Yeah, potentially, but you know, there's no pressure on you know Microsoft have decided to go that way, and that's yeah. their choice. They've decided to go that way, and you know, games go on to Game Pass day one, and it's great for Xbox gamers. You know, Microsoft well and truly lost the last generation, so now they're doing what they can to bring people mm-hmm. to their platform. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But PlayStation aren't losing consumers. No, nope, because be. there's a very hardcore PlayStation fan base. Yeah, you know they they want to play all them exclusive games because them exclusive games they aren't on Xbox. Mm. What would also... I rather play? What would I rather play? Halo or Uncharted? Obviously, I'd rather play Uncharted because it's a better yeah. game. Yeah, in our opinion. But well, yeah, okay, yeah, in our <laughs> in our opinion. But there are people that would disagree. You know, people arguing over because they're Xbox cons- fanboys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, there are Xbox fanboys. I'm not saying that you know that no, they're not. No, there there, there, there isn't. Yeah. But you know. Your game, your your big games are still coming, and you'll still be able to get to play the games that you want to play on the console that you want to play. Mm-hmm. People are talking about Bethesda, like let's be fair. Outside of yeah, Doom's great. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I don't think that'll be an Xbox exclusive. No. Um, Elder Scrolls. I don't think that'll be a PlayStation, an Xbox exclusive. I don't think so. But there will be Bethesda games that are play uh, that are Xbox exclusives. Probably because Microsoft own that studio. But yeah. the, the big games, are, you know, Microsoft are going to make money off them. Big time. So why would you not bring the Elder Scrolls to PlayStation? Because it's going to bring you money in. Yeah. I, I imagine with smaller games, like maybe like if they make like either Evil Within 3 might go be Xbox exclusive. But the bigger games yeah. like Elder Scrolls and Doom, well, I don't think. They'll be everywhere as they are now. Yeah, exactly. Nintendo do this. No one says fucking anything. <laughs> you can't play Bayonetta on anything but a Nintendo console. Yeah, I wish. I was going to play uh, Bayonetta 3 on <laughs> PlayStation. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you're going to have to play it on Switch because Nintendo don't give two shits. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but it's still 60 quid you everywhere. Know, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. It's just, it's just a, it's a nothing argument. Yeah. And people need to realise that they're still going to be able to play all the games they want to play. Exactly. Fanboyism at its finest. It's, it's, it's just it's such a terrible thing. You know, I'm lucky oh, enough to have both. I've got a Series X and I've got a PS5, you know, because I pre-ordered like a, like a clever person. Yeah. You got lucky. I, didn't want, I, I didn't expect to walk into the shop in the middle of a fucking pandemic and pick up a brand new console day one. Yeah. Right, so I pre-ordered, I can play everything, and that's fine. But, you know, 
not everyone is as lucky, but you can still play everything that you want to play. Yeah. That's it. And if you can't play it, get over it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly that. It's if you like, can't play it, get I would over love, it. I would love to play the new Spider-Man. But, I can't. but you can't, can you? Because you've got an Xbox. It's not like there's a shortage guess, of games around here. And guess it? what? And guess what? I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Oh, there we go, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> play well, what you want to play, enjoy what you want to enjoy, and stop being a bunch of fucking nerds. There you go. And at the, and at the end of the day, words. it's fucking baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the original point, it's baseball. Yeah, pretty much. It's the American equivalent of cricket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, go it's good. Good comparison. Yeah, go and watch that baseball movie with with Charlie Sheen and Madonna in, mm-hmm. and just get over it. All right, Charlie Sheen and Madonna. Is it a league of their own or something like that? Where there's like it's Tom, Tom Hanks, isn't it? No, Tom Hanks. I don't think it's Tom Hanks, is it? I, I don't even know anymore. I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> there's a baseball movie look. you can watch that instead. Uh, I'm having a yeah. look now. Field of Dreams. Go watch that. Moneyball. Field of Dreams. Great film. Moneyball. Oh, it Mate. is Tom Hanks. It is Tom Thank Hanks. You. You're right. I stand corrected. Tom Hanks. Ding. Gina, Gina come Davis. On, come on, Finn. Give me the ding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good, solid, good solid 90s cast, to be fair. Gina Davis, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking baseball. Jesus. Anyways, baseball. <laughs> Deal with it. Get over Nerds. it. Nerds. 46 minutes into this podcast and this is going to be a long one today uh, yep uh, that's what she said other quick news um, Alan Way 2 oh, wait. Uh, uh, yeah Alan Way 2 potentially in development there's rumours going around um, it wouldn't surprise me as there was like some DLC crossover with Control recently um, yeah so yeah I've very much like that really enjoyed the first one so yeah more of that please a sequel is long overdue as well great yeah. game mm. great game Steve you should play that it's on Game Pass don't kill yeah. the PlayStation guys yeah. <laughs> Game Pass what He's using Game Pass. Game Pass, yeah. Baseball, black. <laughs> uh, and the other little bit here is Watch Dogs Legion is getting a 60 FPS upgrade on PS5 oh, and Xbox. Yeah. yeah. Good. What, cool. 60, 60 FPS 4K? Um, also about 4K, it just says 60 FPS here. Um, I'm pretty certain it already has that. Oh, yeah, very just oh, no, 4K. Wait. No, 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 wait. I think it's one or the other. I think um, that, it's oh, it 4K says... on Xbox. Yeah, it has, says it has weight version 4K already, but only at 30 FPS. But next gen mm-hmm. is going to have that and 60 FPS. So all, oh, all of the good. good things. Weird game, Watch Dogs Legion is. Really yeah. weird game. Yeah, it's, it's not one of the games, but it's not really good, but also kind of fun at the same time. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's not as good as two. It probably isn't even as good as one. But yeah. it's um, it's it's a strange game that's again, it's good, but it's shit. Like Outriders. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, <laughs> yeah, also, uh, Elder Scrolls Online is now free for a few days. A lot of platforms, do you want to check that out? What? I know, right? <laughs> hey, that's a Bethesda game. Yeah, what? <laughs> if that's free on PlayStation, I'm going to kick off. Yeah, ah, so uh, bullshit. Uh, but yeah, PS4, <laughs> PS5, Xbox One, Series X, slash Esh, Esh, S. Esh. <laughs> PC yeah, and Shiri's Stadia. Ash. Sean Connery. Sean Connery is buying Xbox Connery. Series Ash. PC. Series Ash. Google Sh- Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost the plot. Yeah, we have bit. lost. To be honest, yeah, the, uh, baseball has fucking driven us over the edge. <laughs> baseball. Sport. We're talking Sports. baseball. Baseball. Madly and I don't. Even <laughs> <laughs> the the the, the, the straw. There we go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> but yeah, it's free from now until April 13th. So I might give that a try because why not? It's free. Um, uh, what are you going to be playing it on? Because you can. Uh, PC or PS5, probably. What? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You can play on whatever you want. Who cares? Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> you make me so angry, Finn. Yeah, I know. I apologize for any fanboy out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's about it. That's all the big news from the week. As far as I can tell. So yeah. That's that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that went on for a bit while, for a little while. It is the <laughs> first saying. podcast of the month. <laughs> yep. So you know what that means. You know what that means. It's games of the month time. Oh, yeah. Hit the music. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you spoke about it briefly I'm earlier. I'm ready for this. <laughs> you spoke about it briefly earlier. Outriders is now now everywhere. Um, it's good and Pretty terrible. Nice yep. <laughs> 
Here at Xbox, it's good. Uh, it's out everywhere. It's leading PC, Xbox One, PS, PS5, 2DX, Toaster. It's everywhere. Uh, and yeah, it's good and bad. So check it out. Yeah, it's good and shit at the same time. <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Also a game. Sorry, music went to me. No, also the game um, I know we're looking forward to. Uh, Train Station Simulator is finally coming out on Switch and Xbox. Yes! Uh, <laughs> it's been on PC since 2017. Um, it's now what? coming to console because why not, I guess? It's super popular. Oh, oh speaking of actually, mm. last week we talked about Lawn Mowing Simulator. Oh, yeah. They started following me on Twitter like a couple of days after. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. It was the podcast, I guess. Fair I hope play. not. <laughs> 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 I went to their uh, store page on Steam the other day out of curiosity, and there was like a live stream going on with someone interviewing the developer. It was like a woman interviewer, and she sounded like super bored and like <laughs> she's like trying to trying to pretend to be interested. I'm like, oh, so what's this game about? It's like, oh, hmm, oh, hmm, hmm, yeah, wow, hmm, great. <laughs> <laughs> it's about mowing grass. That's the end of the interview, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just you know, typical. I don't give a shit, but I'm here, you know. <laughs> because I've been told to be here. You can mow short grass, you can mow long grass, you can mow medium grass, yeah. you can have a fly mow, or a streamer, or a sit on <laughs> long mow. Uh, yeah, I just made me laugh. You like, got your two stroke petrol, your four stroke petrol engine. <laughs> <laughs> you got your pull cord, so you can use a key to start the more. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, that made me chuckle. Uh, anyway, but yeah, train station simulator looks like sort of like um, you know, more to like Wild to Tycoon, but with train stations. I guess. Does it look like those people that stand on train platforms with pens and paper? <laughs> no, it's like a top-down isometric kind of thing. You control bits and pieces. It looks cool. fine if you're into train stations, I guess. That's for you. <laughs> Uh, if you like train stations, this is the game for you. Yeah, yeah. Games and graphs, seal of approval. There's a game I know we're all excited for. Uh, a game called C14 Dating. It's a dating simulator. <laughs> it's been out for a while everywhere else. It's come to PS4 and PS5. Because why not? Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it's a uh, you know, visual novel dating simulator kind of thing. Of course it is. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. it is. Why not? Is it, is it like a Japanese game? Um, it looks Japanese, but I think it's actually made by a Western developer in the style of Japanese games. So there's definitely going to be uh, shiny vaginas in there. Uh, no, it's more tame actually. It looks more like more of a tame sort of uh, game. Oh. Yeah. Just cleave. <laughs> just, 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 just cleave. Yeah. Just cleave. Okay. <laughs> uh, where's the music on? There it is. Shiny um, boobs instead. <laughs> yeah. Shiny boobs instead. Um, what else? Oh yes, Star Wars Republic Commando is getting a remaster slash re-release on PS4 Ooh. and Switch. A lot of fans of that back in the day. I think it's a PS2 game. I think. Yeah, I think that's PS2 right. PS2. Yeah, I think that'll be that'll be pretty popular. Yeah. Was that, was that one on Xbox as well? The original Xbox. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not... Cool. That that that'll be popular. They, they brought quite a lot of these old Star Wars games out recently, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Good times. But you know what? Not an Xbox this time. Suck it, nerds. PS4 for life. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, right? It's PS4 and Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Um, yeah. So that's that. Um, Oh yeah, Oddbolt Soulstorm, of course, April 6th, coming free on PS5. Nice. Um, is it free on Xbox? Uh, no, it's not. Not coming to Xbox. <laughs> sorry guys, sorry guys. On PC though. Yeah. There you go, you see, look. There it is. Trade baseball for Abe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good times. Um, it's on you... Xbox though, isn't it? And Switch. Oddbolt, no. Maybe not on Switch. No, on Xbox. Yeah, PC exclusive. Oh, PlayStation exclusive and PC. Oh, I thought it was on Xbox for some reason. Nah, Oddworld's always been. Uh, well, no, not always. It's that Stranger. What's it called? Oddworld, Stranger Wrath, something like that. On Xbox. I think most of them have been on Xbox, haven't they? Not the first two. Oh. I can't remember. But yeah. The first uh, two definitely not. No, yeah, that's PS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think everything except the first two were probably on Xbox. But not this one. Fuck yeah. it, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a game movie called What the Dub. Uh, it is a multiplayer party game where each player overdubs missing dialogue from hilariously awful B movies, outdated PSAs, and bizarre industrial films with their own. Hey, witty... that sounds awesome! It does actually. Yeah, it, looks, it sounds pretty fun. Mm. It's sort of like a um, really good, Jackbox fun. game. Might be a combo to check yeah, out. Yeah, that sounds day. really good. What's that on? That uh, is on literally everything: uh, PC, PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and Mac for some reason. <laughs> yeah, everything. 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 Every combo to play. 
Um, what's it got? A game called Say No More. Say No exclamation mark more. Uh, it's the world's first NPG no playing game. Uh, players in turn with a burning desire to say no to everything and everyone. Customize your character, say no in different styles and languages, clap back at mean colleagues, and change the world. Sounds fine. Interesting. Oh, it looks Sounds all, weird. Yeah, it looks all like a PS1 game. <laughs> PS1 style graphics. It's kind of wacky and cool, I guess. Cool. Uh, coming out of PC. Different. Yeah, coming out of PC and Switch. Yeah, interesting one. Um, we got it's music, man. It, it's the best. I love <laughs> it so much. Yeah, okay, no one guessed what game it was from, by the way, on Twitter. Uh, it's from Deadly um, Premonition. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> Great game. Great, terrible game. Uh, <laughs> we got a game called uh, Trials of Cold Steel 4, which is next uh, in a very popular uh, Japanese RPG series, which I really want to get, get into, but don't have time because it's adult, adult life. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> a lot of fans of that genre, a lot that game series. So yeah, good times. Uh, yeah, come to PC and Switch. I think it's already out on PS4. Come to PC and Switch. So that's cool. Um, cool. What else have we got? Cannonball. B R A W L. Wall. Uh, pilot an airship, command powerful weapon emplacements uh, like cannons, giant flamethrowers, and high-powered lasers. Destroy the very earth from your enemy's feet. Cannonball is an exciting mix of real-time strategy and artillery gameplay. Uh, it's like worms, kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> looks alright. There you go. That, that's 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 the selling point for that game. Yeah. It's like worms, but not. Yeah. yeah it looks a bit like worms. Yeah. It looks fun. Uh, I don't want another one that's been out on like everything except Switch. It's come out now on Switch. Uh, yeah. In the dorm Twitch owners. Um, oh. what is this? Oh boy. A game called Alt Dias Beyond the Cronus, which is a sci fi adventure full of robot battles, pop music, and emotion. Japanese. <laughs> featuring one of the lar largest. Right, yeah. yeah. Featuring one of the largest uh, branching storylines ever in a VR game. Ooh. With 15 to 20 hours of gameplay. Uh, wow. Yeah. PS4 and PC and VR. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Um, got another remaster, Shadow Man remastered, which is a PS2 game, I believe. Oh, Jesus, I remember that. Was that on Dreamcast as well? Yeah, I think it was actually, yeah. Is it the one with the guy holding the skull in the picture? That's the one. Yeah. Yep, nailed it. Um, wow, that one. Yeah, coming out on PC. Um, it was 15th, coming out on PS4 and Switch eventually. No confirmed date yet. Um, but yeah, cool. found that back in the day. Here it is, HD, HD applied, looking nice. I think I ever played it, did you? Um, I don't think so. It's one I always saw on, like, like pre-owned on game shelves, but never actually picked up. Yeah, uh -huh. same. Yeah, quite worth a try. Um, we have a game here called uh, Stitchy in Tuki Trouble, <laughs> and the guy is basically a clone of Sackboy. It looks just like Sackboy, literally in a hat. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Sony's going to be calling, saying, you know, we're suing you because <laughs> he's basically stolen <laughs> Sackboy's design. Uh, it's a two D. We need to make problem. some money back because we're losing money on the baseball game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, Baseball. Yeah, it's a basic 2D platformer. It looks fine, but yeah, it's Sackboy. Ripped him off completely. Which is very funny. Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> coming out on Switch. Um, what else you got? Oh, MLB, the game called MLB The Show. Don't know if you've heard of it. Um, no. Coming out day one next on Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> um, didn't you know? What? <laughs> uh, so that's that. Um, oh boy, here we are. There's one every, one every week, month. Uh, Toy, to, toy Hugh Hayo Ibana at Tonomi of Common Flowers. Bless you. <laughs> Thanks. It is a. It's like when. You know that part in Wayne's World where uh, Rob Lowe's character orders Chinese? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like ordering it in Chinese and then he, Chinese, says, yeah. and he says Pepsi Cola. And it's like, it's like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, 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 Common Flowers. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a studio <laughs> fighting game. Yeah, weird. It's coming out. Weird it's coming out over here, but it is. Uh, PS4 and Switch. Why not? Sure. Yeah, sure. Tohoyo Hiyo Ibana has now to me of or, or at, at Tinomi of Common Flowers. <laughs> sure. <laughs> do we not have the, the Google thing where it talks? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do that. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> That's how you say it. 
Thanks, Google. Cool, yeah. <laughs> and there we have another sports game. Uh, MotoGP 21. Motorbikes. Uh, coming out and everything. So, such a niche game, this. I mean, yeah, like, pretty much. this must really sell well like, but from the hardcore fans of that sport because mm. somehow they manage to get a game out every single year. Every year. Yeah. It looks pretty as well. Like, really nice looking game. These games are so difficult as well. They're very much simulators. Oh, yeah. And hard, yeah. Big yeah, time. Really difficult games. Like a more like a Gran Turismo or Forza, Forza Motorsport kind of game. Don't know. But even That's harder really. than that. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> they're, like, they're deep. Yeah. Wow. Really deep games. Nice. Too hard for knobheads like us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, coming out everything, including Switch, which is interesting. Very cool. Cool. Ooh. Yes, and we got... What else we got? Um... Just give them food and stuff here. Oh, yes, a game I'm looking forward to. You guys, probably not so much. Uh, Near Replicant, version 1.22474487139. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the uh, first game in the Near uh, series. Remastered, coming out PS4 and Xbox. I think it was PS, 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 PC and PS4, not all about Xbox. Yeah. Um, what? I know, right? What? <laughs> I know, right? Right, fanboys. Uh, but yeah, it's a remaster. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> Looks very nice. HD'd up. Um, look forward to playing that. It's not as smooth and good as near Automata. It's not made by Platinum. A um, bit more rough around the edges, but still a really good game. So I'm looking forward to playing that. Yeah, people are really looking forward to this one. It looks good. Um, yeah. Automata's really good, but it's not for me, only because I don't really understand it. It's weird. Uh, but yeah, this looks great. Yeah, so it's a good. Really looking forward to playing that. Good times. Uh, and then we've got Judgment coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X, which is the uh, Yakuza oh, okay. spin-off detective game. Really good game. Really, really good game. I really mean, good. The upgrade isn't free, I don't think, though. Yeah, that's the only thing. It's no free upgrade for current owners, which is, a bit, which is the same. That's a real shame. That's a really good game. I mean, that's a pretty game as well. It Basically, it looks like Yakuza. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, set in the same universe. Um, yeah. Yeah, very cool game. It's good as well. It's, just, it's, it's funny and serious at the same time. Um, I, I definitely recommend that game. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, got a game here called Death End Re Semicolon Quest, which uh, takes a classic turn based RPG and turns it on its head. Players are able to change the game's genre and switch game modes from RPG into fighting, shooter, and even slot, even the slot mode. Interesting. That sounds slot pretty mode? cool, actually. Um, slot mode? Yeah, like a. Like a um, what do they call it? Um, slots, you know, but money and what the hell is it called? Oh, right, slot machine. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's yeah, I didn't realize that's exactly what it was gonna mean. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. It sounds like sounds pretty interesting actually. Like, turned into 2D fire all of a sudden, and then like shooting game. Weird, but cool. I like it. Coming out on Switch mm. in three weeks. Neat, cool. That's um, interesting. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, then we've got um, Secret Neighbor coming to PS4. Always, uh, it's been out for a while on PC and Xbox. Which is a multiplayer game. A, a group of kids try to rescue their friend from the neighbor's creepy basement. Only problem is, one of the kids is a neighbor in disguise. So basically, you play as like a group of four. One of the person is like a secret bad guy. He's got to try and kill is off this, the kids. Is this like Hello whatever. Neighbor? Yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's the same game, just named differently. So I mean, oh, yeah. But it sounds like Among Us as well because obviously, yeah, we got like the imposter mm. type thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much Among Us. Um, yeah, pretty much same sort, same sort of idea. Okay, it's very popular when it first I mean, came that, out. That, that genre is going to get done to death now that Among Us is super popular. Oh yeah, big time, <laughs> big big time. Um, oh, lost the list. There it is. Um, then we've got uh, Pokemon Snap coming to Switch. New Pokemon Snap. A lot of people oh, are excited about. Yeah, that's this month on the thirtieth. A lot of people are cool. fans of the original on on uh, N64. Yeah. Very basic, but very you know addictive, addictive and fun. At the same time, cool. Yeah, don't switch and switch, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know why to specify that. Um, then we've got a game that's not going to be very good. Uh, Terminator Resistance is already been out on PC and PS4. For some reason, it's coming out on PS5. Um, why? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, I looked it up on Metacritic. It's got a whopping 47 on PS4. <laughs> <laughs> is this coming to Xbox as well, or is this a PlayStation game? Uh, just PlayStation for now. It's out on Xbox One, but only coming to PS5, not Xbox Series X for some reason. Um, made by a company no called... No one cares anyway, though, do they? That's yeah. fair. No, I, I don't know who's buying that. 
Yeah, me neither. Made by Taon, which is a company I hadn't heard of. Um, I'm going to the list of games here. One of the games was Rambo, the video game. Which um, was a Rambo up, video game? Apparently so. I'm um, looking it up on Metacritic now. Just out of curiosity. Hold on. Let me guess. It's shit. Uh, yeah, I imagine <laughs> it's probably... Oof, yeah. <laughs> Not great. But whopping 23 on Metacritic. Wait, is this Ooh. the one that was for PlayStation Move? Yeah, I think it was actually, yeah. PlayStation Move. 23 Awful. out of 100. Nice. Good times. Good times. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Not good. Uh, oh, Heavy, Heavy Fire, I've heard of. Oh, let's have a look at that. I think it's on 360. I'm curious now. I want to see if they're all, you know, completely terrible. Made a lot of like, party games, like, loads of mini games and stuff in. Okay. Um, like, like on Wii and stuff. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> it doesn't even have a score because no one reviewed it. Um, wow. Oh, here we go. There's two wow. reviews. There's two reviews on there. Uh, one of them's 2 out of 10. The other one's 2.5 out of 10. So, <laughs> solid game. <laughs> solid game for you. Oh, dear. Right. Yeah. Why are people giving these people money to make games? <laughs> Strange. I can't believe that that Terminator game has even warranted a PS5 upgrade. Yeah, it's so weird. I guess. It's, no, like, there must have been some fans out there, I guess. I guess, but yeah. Jesus. Very strange. Uh, and then the only other game on here that looks interesting is Returnal. Coming out on PS5, PS5 exclusive. Oh, yeah. yeah this, so is, this looks interesting and weird at the same time. Very weird. It's a roguelike, a triple-A roguelike game, which I don't see very often, if at all. Um... Yeah, you're going through weird, dark environments, and then you know, that's very there's, um, occasional story elements. Like in the trailer, you know, had them going inside a house and like going through old memories and things. It was very interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm intrigued. I'm not going to buy it day one, but I am intrigued. I want to. I'm interested interested to see like reviews and things with this one. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, it look it does look interesting for sure. Um, it's different for a PlayStation exclusive, but um, yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting. I think we said before when you saw the trailer the first time around, the combat looked a bit um, iffy, but kind of basic. But yeah. the, but the premise is very cool, so I'm interested to find out what that's going to be like. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for April. A few good ones in there, a lot of bad stuff in there, as usual. Same old, same old. But yeah, good month. Yeah. Decent month. Yeah, it's a decent month to be fair. What's your pick of the month, Effin? Um, I'm going to go with Oddworld, for sure. Uh, Oddworld or Nier. I'm going to go with Oddworld because it's free. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, just like a classic, classic Oddworld game, but updated. And yeah, yeah. I would say Oddworld is probably the best game this month. That yeah. and maybe Pokemon, Pokemon Snap. Yeah, Pokemon as well. Good stuff. Happy Steve. Any, any, any just interest in there? MLB because it's free. <laughs> there you go. MLB. This is. No, I will download it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah that's right. Why not? Clue what I'm doing, but uh, yeah. I'll download it. No, not, nothing else really grabbed me. Really, I, a lot of that went straight in my head. But yeah, cool, there good stuff. Go. And the music ends cool. just in time. Bit of breaking Perfect. news at the bottom of the screen there. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Baseball causes the world to melt, pretty much. The gaming world it melted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's do this. Finn leads the series one to nothing. Hell yeah. It's time for a brand new round of the Eliminator. Shit, I'm, all, I'm never ready. I'm never ready. I never think of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to my paper ready, got my pen ready, and then you, you, yeah, say it again. Go for it again. Okay. <laughs> it's time for a brand new round of the Eliminator. There we go. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> one one day I'll remember, and I'll be ready for it. But not this um, week. So Steve, you saved uh, rave reviews as the uh, the quiz master last week. Really? Yeah. People thought you did a really awesome. good job. Thank you. It was a good we round. It was a really it. good round of the eliminator last week. Tight as well. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we'll, we'll see how this one goes. Um, as I mentioned last week, if there are any answers here that you feel are incorrect, don't blame me. We don't care. The internet. Then we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and, we don't, and, and guess what? I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> so, yes, as you mentioned, uh, Finn is winning 1-0 of this uh, best of nine series. So let's move on very quickly to question number one. And I'm also the current uh, Games and Grabs Eliminator Champion. 
He's going to put that out there. Yeah, look, let's not talk about that. Let's move on. You're such a bad winner. Oh, no, I'm the best winner. I win all the time. What are you talking about? Terrible winner. <laughs> Terrible. Question number one. I'll eat you in gently again. I think you'll know this one, guys. Which original member of the Shield, so not Triple H or Kurt Angle, oh. did not debut on NXT? Oh. Open ended. So one of three, obviously. I think it's got to be this guy. Pens down. Finn Steele, what have you gone for? I've gone for Dean Ambrose, John Moxley. Sonny? Uh, I too have gone for Dean Ambrose. Correct, Dean Ambrose. Hey. Well done, guys. Good stuff. Nice. Just so no one gets whitewashed there. <laughs> um, okay, question number two. Hmm. The US Army used which game to help train their tank division? <laughs> Was it A, Asteroids, B, Space Invaders, C, Battlezone, or D, Pac-Man? Can, can I have their answers again, please? Sorry. Terrible. Asteroids, Space Invaders, Battlezone, or Pac-Man? Okay. Pens down. Finn Steel. I have gone for Battlezone. Just because it seems like a weird one to pull out out of nowhere. Um, I have no idea, so I went for asteroids. The correct answer is C, battle zone. E. Sonny, you have lost a life. I mean, it just seems too obvious. What a weird thing to do as well for the army, by the way. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Um, yeah, well, there's a there's a couple of other uh, army related questions as well in this quiz. We, mm. If we get that far. I know the US Army game at one point. It wasn't good. Oh, really? What, what yeah. an official game? Yeah, it had like a US Army branded game of some sort. Yeah. It was weird. Wow. Yeah. It wasn't good. Mm. <laughs> like best bet shooter, yeah. Interesting. Right then. So Sonny, you have lost a live year four remaining. Finn, you are still on five. Yay. Five remaining lives. <laughs> Question number three. Released in 2011, Duke Nukem Forever is regarded as the game that was in development for the longest. Oof. What year did development start? Is it A, 1996, B, 1997, C, 1998, or D, 1999? So it came out in 2011. What year did development start on the game? What was the first one you said? Six or seven? 96. 97, 98, or 99. Cool. Had a long time well, to develop. And then it well, came out. takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> and it came out. Pens down. God awful. Pens down. Yeah, it's awful as well, isn't it? It's a yeah. really bad one. I have it still. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> Finn, what did you go for? I went for the earliest. I went for 1996. Um, okay. I have no idea. Can I me? went for 1998. The correct answer is B, 1997, you are Ooh. both wrong. Damn it. Both lose a life. Wow. Ah. What a shit show of a game. Yeah. Duke Nukem doesn't have a good run, to be fair. No, I played through it out of morbid years. curiosity. And yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> so, Sonny, you've lost two lives, three remaining. Finn, you have lost a life, four remaining. Mm. Question number four. Which video game character was the first to have a balloon at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade oh. in Manhattan? Was it A, Pac-Man, B, Mario, C, Sonic the Hedgehog, or D, Donkey Kong? Pens down. Finn Steele. Uh, your guess, I've gone for Sonic the Hedgehog. First game, okay. okay. Um, also, also a pure guess, uh, I've gone for Pac Man. The correct answer, and a good guess there, Finn, hey. Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> is the 
correct Jesus. answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank an you. awful round here. <laughs> How you feeling, Sonny? Um, a little bit nervous, to be honest. I think you know this, this is a tough round. I mean, this pure guesswork, to be honest. And I, I probably need to start putting a, some easier questions in, don't I? Well, it's yeah. not so much that. Sorry. I mean, it is sort of pure guesswork, isn't it? Really. I mean, I had no yeah. idea about the Macy's Day Parade thing. No, no I mean, I, I would have had to have guessed. I'd have probably gone Mario before I saw it, or maybe even Pac-Man, just because of how old it is. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. why I went for Pac-Man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Question number five, I need you to listen to this one closely. When Brock Lesnar became the youngest WWE champion, he took the record away from which wrestler? Mm. Was it A, The Rock, B, Randy Orton, C, Yokozuna, or D, The Undertaker? So that's the WWE Championship. Pens down. Finn, what have you gone for? Um, I remember seeing something about he was how he was surprisingly young um, at the time he won. Uh, so I've gone for Yokozuna. I might be completely wrong. No. Okay, Sonny. Um, I went for The Rock. The correct answer is C, Yokozuna. Hey. WWE so you've unfortunately F, lost whatever. another <laughs> life. So yeah, so the reason I sort of said listen carefully though is because a lot of people say Randy Orton's the youngest champion, mm. but that was the world that was the heavyweight championship. That's the big goal. Well, plus Brock Lesnar won the championship before Randy Orton was even in WWE and that, as well. As well, yeah, but it's your age, isn't it? It's based on your yeah. age. So yeah. you know, um, yeah. So that's yeah. It was uh, Brock was twenty five, um, but yeah, Yokozuna <clears throat> was twenty six when he won it. So wow, yeah, surprisingly young. Wow. Uh, then I think it was The Rock. He was like twenty seven, and The Undertaker was twenty eight, something like that. Wow. Okay, Sonny, you unfortunately you have one. Yeah, this is going to be over pretty quick. One life remaining. I feel pretty bad. No, it's but fine. it's not over. You, you, you know. I think you'll be, I think you'll be all right. Just having a bad round here, to be honest. It happens, mate. Remember that mm. time Finn just didn't get a question right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as he likes to remind you, he's still the champion. Yeah. Still the um, champion. champion. <laughs> question number six, then. This is an open-ended question, unfortunately. Ooh. Which of the five PlayStation consoles that have been released was the most expensive at launch? No pressure, Sonny, but which one well. lo- which one launched with the most with the biggest retail price? Five. Well, Finn, Finn obviously knows, but I'm just gonna yeah, okay. I'm, I'm done. Finn Steele. Uh, I do believe it was the PS3. Sonny, what have you gone for? Honestly, I went for the PS1 uh, because I wasn't uh, not 100 percent sure to be quite honest. Okay. The correct answer and taking a 2-0 lead in the Eliminator. Correct answer is the PS3. Finn Steele, you are this week's winner. Woo. How much was the PS3? A lot. The PS3 was $600 at launch. Oh. Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of controversy about it and, you know, people were pissed off. That's why Xbox Which, had a huge lead going into that generation. I think, I think, it, yeah, and it's um, like one of the lowest selling as well, isn't it? Mm. Yes. Because of that, I think they they uh, they tried to take advantage of the fact that the PS2 was obviously the most popular console ever, and uh, they thought they could just rip people off. I think. Yeah, it's remember the boomerang controller they tried to <laughs> they showed us. The what? That? Yeah. The boomerang controller, yeah. like silver weird shaped controller. Oh, yeah, 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 it looked, yeah. Like a, looked like a batarang, didn't it? Yeah. Also, do you remember yeah. that they took out the vibration and the original controllers? And they replaced it with the six axis. Yeah, the, the PS3 <laughs> really didn't take off until later in that generation. I mean, the 360 had it locked mm. down. Really. Yeah, there's some really weird oh, ideas for yeah. the PS3. Yeah. 
So thinking back now, that was probably because obviously I had a PlayStation One and a PlayStation Two, and then um, and then I jumped over to the 360. And mm. I think the reality is was pro- probably the price point, to be honest. Yeah, more, probably. More yeah. yeah, that and the fact that we, and that probably explains why so many people I knew, yourself included, there, Sonny, mm-hmm. had the 360 rather than a PS3 because yeah, the pro- the price point, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, very expensive, six hundred dollars. I mean, that's, that's a lot the of sort money. of. I mean that's the sort of price people thought the PS5 would be. Yeah. You know, and we're talking when did when did the PS3 come out? 2004, five. Late 2008. 2008. Yeah. 2008. Something yeah. Like that. yeah, 2008. So yeah, still a lot of money. Back it's there. a hell of a lot so. of money. Yeah, it really is a lot of money. Okay. Um, yeah, congratulations, Finn. That was a tough round. I had a yeah, I yeah. didn't have a not my finest moment, must be said. But um, I'll be back. It's fine. Yeah, it's all You'll good. Be back. You, can, you, and, can, you uh, can bring it back. I mean, you won't. But you know, obviously, uh, you know, next week we have a slightly different uh, eliminator. Mm-hmm. Don't we do. We? I think Sonny got Eva yeah. going into that one with his uh, wide wrestling knowledge. We think mm. so, but don't know. She's not done me too good today. But yeah, yeah so next week um, on Friday we're going to be releasing a um, special WrestleMania edition of the Eliminator as a standalone episode because next week there's not going to be a standard version of the podcast. So um, we are doing pre-shows for both NXT TakeOver and also WrestleMania. So we'll be doing Wednesday and Thursday night for NXT and then Saturday and Sunday for WrestleMania. And they're going to be live on our uh, Facebook and YouTube as well as the Powered 4 TV Facebook page as well. Uh, nice. But the Eliminator that we're going to record is going to be a standalone episode uh, that will be on. Um, we'll release it everywhere. So it'll be released as an audio and a video podcast. And that'll be out on yeah. Friday. So uh, that'll be a WrestleMania special. All at WrestleMania questions. Because obviously the, the show of shows is next weekend. So yeah. Um, yeah. We're still going to bring you content without bringing you an official podcast episode. But I think that, that's going to be really good fun. I think it's like a, a, a special um eliminator yeah yeah definitely i think do it slightly differently as well maybe we have a set amount of questions and see see who gets them see who gets the most so we don't we don't end up with a 10 minute eliminator potentially <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah, we can do it. that that sounds that sounds good cool yeah and then you know if you're both equal at the end of it uh i do of course have sudden death questions so there we go cool right sounds good good stuff Right, so that brings us to the highs and lows in the week of wrestling. Now, oh you, would, wrestling. you would think that WWE would step their game up in terms of quality of shows this close to WrestleMania. Nope. Steve's about hey, to tell you otherwise. What? I am about to tell you otherwise, but I just want to cover off some wrestling news first. So oh, sure, I'll yeah. go through these uh, quite quickly. Um, so Brian Kendrick has announced his retirement. It seems. Yes. Um, okay. So he's uh, he's retired. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed him in the in the Cruiserweight Classic. He was uh, he was one of the main guys that really pushed that after the tournament as well. The, uh, the definitely yeah. stuff. You know, he was one of those main guys, uh, even though he didn't you know win the tournament and stuff. So yeah, um, he's trained a lot of guys as well. So uh, yeah, a, a, a popular figure I think in in wrestling, and uh, he's he's decided to to call it a day. Yeah, I've always yeah. always been a fan of uh, Brian Kendrick. Uh, yeah. I always loved the Brian Kendrick uh, gimmick that he has. Uh, yeah. The music was always great as well. And I think he's been mm. working as a producer for WWE. Um, yeah, for a while, yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's still going to continue that role. One would assume that he will. But, yeah, happy retirement, yeah. Mr. Kendrick. Uh, always been a big fan. So, uh, yeah. yeah. What's happened there? Deserved. Yes. But, yeah, as you said, I always liked him back in the day as well. Um, his original run and his, you know, cruise rate run recently. Um, but yeah, it's a shame to see him go, but I understand. I understand why. It's good. Yeah, that, it's good course, that he's sticking yeah, around and training sure. people and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah and sure. working as a producer, so that's good. Yeah, good stuff. Um, just some Hall of Fame news. So uh, William Shatner is going into the celebrity <laughs> wing of the Hall of Fame because cool. why not? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Titus O'Neil is going to receive or has received the uh, Warrior Award for all of his uh, for all of his charitable work and all the great yeah. stuff that he does. Being an ambassador for WWE, so, so good. see that's what the Warrior Award is all about. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it should it, sh- it should be for 
for people like that that are doing doing stuff above and beyond you know your your you know your your guys that are putting up the ring every bloody week and you know your cameramen and you know people like Jim oh Jim Johnson Jim Johnson should go in it anyway in the Hall of Fame in my I opinion. agree but there we I go. can't believe he's not but um you know that's what Ultimate Warrior originally wanted he wanted it yeah. to be the unsung heroes of the wrestling world not and WWE just like did it wrong well yeah. they used it as a, an oppor- a commercial opportunity didn't they. Yeah, yeah. By, by by giving it to these charities who obviously do great work, but it was, obvious, it was it was, and I think Stephanie got caught out, didn't she? She uh, she tweet retweeted an article that was about how um, using charities for uh, philanthropy, uh, you know, yes, you know, you, yeah, you use charities to enhance your brand and stuff, which is a bit a bit ropey ground. So I'm glad mm. it's kind of gone to someone like Titus, Titus O'Neil, and hopefully this carries on. Uh, going forward um and then rvd one of a kind well oh deserved confirmed for the hall of fame 2021 yeah Damn. big fan one of man. rvd yeah uh, big yeah. fan of rvd he's really you know deserves it absolute you know really is an absolute legend in the world of wrestling he's done so yeah. much i mean he's you know he's been around for Jesus, long, long time now. You know, great runs in ECW as the television champion. Um, you know, we had memorable stint in WWE. Uh, he's, you know, he's done a lot in his career. He's such an incredible talent. Like, really mm. sort of reinvented um, the way a lot of people looked at professional wrestlers, you know, and, and you know, people who could do, like, martial arts stuff as well. So, yeah, big fan of RBD, and it's awesome that he's, uh, he's going to be getting his Hall of Fame induction this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Yep, really cool. Good. So, any favourite RVD matches? Anything that stands out to you? Yeah. Um, Jeff Hardy uh, Invasion. What Ooh. a match. RVD versus Jeff Hardy Invasion. It was so good. He wore the um, like the uh, the tiger print um, oh, yeah, yeah. that he wears. Um, yeah. yeah, and he, he sort of took out Jeff Hardy before the match. And they just had a brilliant match. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It was so, so good. What year is that? Invasion, two thousand and five. Cool. Uh, no, no, that's wrong. That's way too late. Two thousand and one. Invasion. Two thousand and one. All right, I'll check I think that so. out. So, let me double check it. Yeah, two thousand and five is not at all. It was definitely uh, the <laughs> WWF invasion. The rest of the pay per view, like yeah, so Ju- July twenty second, two thousand and one. All right, cool. I'll check that match out. Um, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, you obviously, I mean, my introduction to RVD was uh, through watching ECW tapes around your house, Sonny. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd only, I'd not long got into wrestling at that point anyway, or back into it. Um, and then I'm watching ECW, which was a massive eye opener. And just this, and then this fucking dude who was just jumping around everywhere had unbelievable entrance music. And thought, yeah, this guy's cool. Walk by Pantera. So, Man, what a song. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thing is that I can't. Right. I will never ever be able to listen to that song again without thinking of RVD. <laughs> no, no, I'm no, I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, yeah for, for me, it would be you know him versus John Cena and One Night Stand in that classic moment. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What yeah. an atmosphere! I mean, yeah. Jesus, imagine being there. There's you know there's hostile crowds <laughs> and then there's that. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, that was insane. I think if John Cena won that, he just it wouldn't be going out alive. <laughs> the <laughs> Hammerstein the Hammerstein Ballroom would have been burnt down. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, great match, great atmosphere. You know, something you'll never, yeah. we'll never get again. Something like that. We credit yeah. to Cena for doing that. Yeah, you know, big time. Yeah, it's just and he played up to it, didn't he? So Good definitely, stuff. yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Cool. Um, and then just a couple of uh, more bits before we go on to the probably the big news of the week. Uh, so there's talk that there's going to be no match on the pre-show of Night One of WrestleMania, and the hmm. reason for this is because. This is the first time a crowd is going to be in front of a, a, a you know, a, a WWE event for well over a year, and they don't want to almost waste the first match of that on a pre-show match. Okay. Well, that tells you all um, you need to know about the pre-show. Nah. How yeah, do you feel about that? Yeah, so, so, so they want the first. So the first match of night one, you know, expect that to be a couple of big names. I think, I think, if I've got this right, I think it'll be Rollins Cesaro. If I've got that right. Yeah, could be. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, maybe I. Is that night one? Is it? Let's have a look. Let me just double check. Uh, that yes. makes sense from WWE, though. You know, to save the first match because let's be fair, the reaction the is going to be the reaction is going to be like goosebump worthy. I can't. I honestly yeah, can't I wait. 
to see a WWE show in front of a live crowd again. Yeah. Yep, it's not yeah. full, but it's still a live crowd. They're still going to make noise. So, the you know, you got to save that first reaction. Imagine walking out there as the first match back in front of a live crowd. When your music hits and that roar goes up, wow, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I think as well, we like when you say when that music hits, have it as someone like Seth Rollins who's you know where the whole crowd are going to join in with the burn it down bit that'll be that that would be that would be brilliant it would be a uh, goosebump worthy so yeah that's but it, that's only that's only rumors might not happen you know we might get some absolute shite on the pre-show. no i think that i think that makes perfect sense i think if they yeah have a pre have a pre-show match on night two fine but uh, i think you know hold yeah. it off to actually start wrestlemania properly yeah um yeah give everyone a chance to filter in get used to the you know what will be odd surroundings to a degree but um yeah that's i i can't wait i can't wait to see what they do i really can't yeah yeah i'll be interested as well um peacock have removed some more um insensitive <laughs> material from the ww more wwe content from yes uh, from obviously that um and that's going to be replicated across all of the networks so all of the obviously the, what, the, what they're oh, you're saying joking. For, the foreign markets they're going to do it across all of it yeah so going forward if they if let's just say for example i don't know uh, let's just say the wwe network is put onto a bt sports streaming app in this country they haven't got mm. to go back through and uh, do it all again and go through that whole rigmarole again so yeah some poor sod has got to go through seventeen thousand hours of content and try and note down all the stuff that is a little bit mm. iffy. Yeah. Jesus, I hope they've got plenty of notepads. <laughs> I hope they've got plenty of Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want that job. Yeah, no. but there we go. That's just something I thought was uh, worthy. And the big news of the week, and uh, yeah, came came uh, like an RKO out of nowhere. Nice. Chris Jericho is going to appear on WWE TV as a guest on Austin's Broken School Sessions over WrestleMania weekend. Who Amazing. saw this coming? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, this is nuts. Right? <laughs> it's insane. It is mental. It is absolutely mental. I, I, uh, when, when you messaged me yesterday, Sonny, and, and put Jericho, what the fuck, I thought he died. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, because I'm not. I've I've come away from social media for a little bit, so I'm you know not not getting stuff straight away. Um, so I frantically went on and was like, okay, he's not died, thank mm. God. Um, I was like, oh shit, and then and then I was, I I got all a bit confused. I was like, so is he left AEW? What what's going on? You were like, no, he was on that. He was on Dynamite this week, and obviously this would have been recorded. This is pre-recorded. It's not going to be live. At, you know, on, on Sunday mm. night, it's you know I got I got all bloody confused with it. I was like, this is just this is crazy, and I really hope um, that you know they that they're allowed to talk about anything and everything. So yeah, um, I think they will. I don't. They, I they know so. that that's what we want. They know full well that's what we want. So yeah, I yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, it started off on um, on Thursday, which was uh, obviously the first of April, April Fool's Day, and there was a Y two J style countdown clock that, yeah. uh, which had the Austin skull as well, and everyone yeah. thought uh, April Fools, but then they they waited twenty four hours and they announced it on the second, and then obviously the video, the camera panned out, and there was Jericho sat across from Austin, and it was truly a bit of a mark out moment, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, um, definite mark out moment. And then a couple of couple of little bits. Just um, Triple H has been asked for it, asked about it, and he said, uh, "I'm not surprised. You know, we we are open for business, apparently." Um, and Austin's been quoted as saying that um, Vince was absolutely fine with it. Austin mm-hmm. went to Vince about it, double checked just to make sure that he'd actually read his messages properly, and said. So you are happy for Chris Jericho to come onto the network and, and be on Broken School Sessions? We didn't even know about AEW. And, uh, <laughs> and apparently, hey, apparently he got a thumb he got a thumbs up emoji back. So uh, you know Vince yeah. is cool with it. Triple H says he's not surprised. So I don't know. Let's see what happens going forward. You know, maybe we get a few more crossover things like this. Maybe not matches or shows, but more kind of like you know network content. This is Very definitely cool. progression, though. You know, in terms of WWE acknowledging the outside world instead of living in that sort of WWE bubble. You know, 
Yeah, uh, you know, Jericho and Vince are still on great terms. You know, if, you know, if you listen to you know Jericho, yeah. he speaks always speaks very highly of, of Vince. He does, and yeah. you know, this is this is a really good thing. I mean, wrestling fans in twenty twenty one, we're not stupid. You know, we all watch everything, and yeah. you know, we all know that everything exists. You know, it's no you know it's no fluke that you know NXT has gone to Tuesday, so Impact has gone to Thursday. You know, and now we've got wrestling every single day of the week. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it's what's yeah. best for everybody. And I think, you know, if WWE realized that acknowledging the outside world, uh, you know, and the bigger scope of wrestling, you know, that, that that is also what is, you know, to quote a WWE thing, it's best for business. It's best yeah, for everybody. For sure. You know, if wrestling thrives, WWE thrives. If wrestling dips, WWE dips. You know, it's as simple as yeah. that. So I think... Um, this is super interesting and I can't wait to watch it. I mean, I'm so excited yeah. to watch it. Um, they, I think they will 100% talk about AEW. I don't understand how they can't. Yeah, exactly. You know, they'll have to. And be- because that would be so ignorant and so, I think, against what Jericho is about these days if they were to, you know, to, to skate over it. Yeah, um, yeah. Because he's had... they'll, they'll have to talk about it. They'll have to. Yeah, and I, I, and this is you know this is the right thing to do. It really is the right thing to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. AEW, looking forward to that because what you don't want to do, I mean, the best thing to do is acknowledge it. Acknowledge that it's there. Yeah, because you know AEW being on Wednesday isn't affecting anything that WWE is doing. Yeah, I know they have their 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 dark shows or whatever on YouTube, but it's not. Yeah. It's not, you know, part of the war, the non-existent war that goes on. Yeah, you know, it's 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 best for everybody that this this happens, and I hope it does lead to more. I'd love to see Dean Ambrose, you know, you know, John Moxley on um, another Stone Cold podcast properly yeah. this time, not being weird like yeah. he was before. Not being, um, yeah. But you know, it's it's great to see, and I'm really excited for it. Yep, and it was a, a huge mark out moment. Mm. Yeah. 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 I'm just glad he's not dead. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, cool. Okay, it. right. Uh, let's move on to uh, the week in wrestling. Uh, I don't feel like this is going to take very long, but famous last words. Hmm. Right. Raw. So, between the Hurt Business seemingly splitting up, Shane McMahon's horrid promos, uh, I, 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 can, I really hate that. I mean, I don't, I don't overly like... I know it's wrestling. I know it's scripted and all of that. And it's, you know... But using the word stupid to describe someone, it's not something I, I like anyway. And it's, no, it's, I don't um, know. I, it's horrible. Uh, um, I think it's, it's you know. Um, the the train noise for Braun when he does his little run around the ring. I mean, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, uh, um, hey, hey, hop, hop. CGI dubs appearing when Riddle jumps in the ring. Oh, like... Um, <laughs> Rinse repeat of the women's tag scene, Baron yeah. Corbin appearing from SmackDown onto Raw. This was an absolutely terrible episode of Raw. And, you know, I know we come on here and, and criticize Raw most weeks, but, you know, this was absolutely awful. Awful, yeah. awful. You know, this yeah, is the by WWE's weeks, terrible two, two standards, Raw was it. fucking awful. This was. I've been I've been I've been more entertained by like local indie shows. I really have. Yeah, easily. Awful, um, but yeah, it's terrible. It's easily the worst war in some time, and that's saying something. That is saying something. Yeah, it was really really bad. You know, which I, is surprising, I mean, I, really. I mean, you know, the week yeah. before I had a bit of direction, and you know, we, we we praised yeah. it. Yeah, we did. We did. It was good, but no, this was this was awful. Um, I, I, I will try and pick out a couple of good bits. Riddle's uh, inverted commas botch uh, backstage when he was doing a doing a backstage bit with Oscar. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, apparently, that was um, that was a, a mistake made in rehearsals. Vince and Bruce Pritchard saw it and said, "No, keep that in. That's hilarious." Yeah. And it was. <laughs> the fear is now is that he'll he'll do it every week. Because they'll yeah. make him do it every week. Yeah, Did because that's, that's, that's um, the WWE way. Something's funny yeah, once, and yeah. then it's funny every single time. Ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see yeah, uh, Seamus? Absolutely. Did you see Seamus doing the same thing on social media? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I was asking with his uh, scooter? <laughs> <laughs> Taking the best out of it. 
yeah. was funny. Yeah. That was funny to be so, fair. Yeah, I do funny. That was funny. <laughs> uh, and the match with Sheamus was okay. Uh, Woods versus AJ was was okay, and uh, it was good to see. Although, albeit both lost, it was good to see Mustafa Ali and Ricochet in the main event. Oh, yeah. But all, albeit a absolute shite show. Terrible. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, why break up the hurt business as well? That's super weird. That's yeah. the one good thing yeah, going, on, going on anymore. And yeah, even Batista and apparently, tweeted apparently about why doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently it is, that is it. They are, they are done. There's no sort of, there's, there's no plans for it to be a kind of at WrestleMania. They'll, they'll regroup and all of that. Their plans are that, that apparently that is it. It's done. So the thing weird. is without it, Lashley is a very cardboard type character. You know, yeah. he's not, he he isn't great on the mic. He needs MVP. I mean, mm. so as long as MVP sticks around, that's great. But the Hurt Business had, you know, felt just like it had a bit of authority behind it, you know? Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, to take that away and to break them up so quickly just seems so brain dead to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it at all. Don't get it. No. Here we go. Okay, I'll move on to uh, NXT then, which was better obviously than raw uh but i felt it didn't really pick up until the the back end of the of the show so um mm-hmm. cameron Grimes defeated uh roddy strong roddy strong was distracted by an undisputed era armband which cameron Grimes pulled out from his crotch which is lovely um <laughs> love cameron Grimes. yeah oh uh, yeah he's great the, the bit at the start when he uh changed the um undisputed era's uh entrance oh, yeah. to shock the what was it I can't remember now, but it was to do with it with him, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's similar to what Champa used to do to Gargano, wasn't it? He chuck a DIY T-shirt at him once to distract oh, yeah. him. Yeah. So yeah, a bit similar to that sort of thing. Uh, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell challenge Blackheart and Moon to the NXT uh, Women's Tag Team Belts at Stand and Deliver. Shit. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, stand uh, yeah. and uh, Deliver. <laughs> where, stand and Deliver. <laughs> There we go. Um, Raquel Gonzalez picks up a win against Zoe Stark. Makes her look strong going into that title match next week. Shame, that because Zoe Stark's good. Yeah, yeah really good. Push on TV. Yeah, I, I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, it could have been That's against someone shame. else. Yeah. yeah, it could have. Could have. I mean, there's about 4,000 uh, female wrestlers now at the uh, at the Performance Center. That could have been against anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this stuff with uh, Zia Lee and Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter is getting a bit, bit rinse repeat now. But um, feel I feel like there needs to be some sort of conclusion to this now. Hmm. Surely there'll be a match. Like, well, it just feels like there's just like it just feels like there's that so every point in a, every week in NXT. Oh, it's it's the Zia Lee bit, you know. So um, oh, yeah, I do like yeah. that the chair lady um, got involved. Somehow, Shelly. <laughs> I can't remember what they call her. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to find out who that actually is in the chair. If it's someone, someone we mm. know, or yeah, I'm intrigued. Yeah, th- there will be some sort of big reveal. You got to believe it. Yeah, yeah, very intrigued. Yeah, I hope so. I just wonder, just wonder what it'll be. Um, and then the the final part of the night, which I thought was the was easily the bit, obviously the best bit, was the uh, the men's battle royal. So mm-hmm. yeah, obviously this men's battle royal that then determined the gauntlet match for night one of Stand and Deliver. Stand and then, and deliver. thank you. <laughs> and then the winner of that will face Gargano for the North American Championship on night two, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I thought it was good. this was good because obviously you got um, you, you got storyline progression here. So um, as I swear, Scott and Leon Ruff went out early early on. Um, Kashida and Pete Dunn uh, were obviously they they'd had words earlier on in the night. Um, something I forgot to mention last week actually was that Kashida had said I'm the best technical wrestler in the world, and yeah. you know I, I I forgot to mention mention it last week because I thought mm. oh, I wonder if that will lead to a match, and it is so. Kashida and Pete Dunn eliminated each other, but as they went over and landed, uh, Kashida kept the uh, kept the hold on. So, uh, and then we came back from a break, and old uh, old Billy Regal it made it a match for next week. There's going to be a banger be as well. Amazing, yeah, yeah really it'd be so good. That'll be such a good match. Yeah. Um, so yeah, eventually LA Knight did win the the battle royal, so that's good. Good, uh, good for him. Good. Uh, so next week's uh, 
gauntlet will start with Scott and Ruff. Then it'll be Bronson Reed. Then it'll be Cameron Grimes. Then Dexter Loomis. And then LA Knight will be last. Mm. On that. So I that w- should be good. I would like LA Knight to win it, but I don't think he will. But No, yeah. I think it'll be... I think it'll be Dexter Loomis so you'll get that match. Loomis versus... Gargano makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that makes perfect does. sense in terms of story progression and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. And then uh, we finish the night with uh, a massive dust up between Gonzalez and Io Shirai and everyone coming out trying to separate them. Mm. You know, I've not seen that for... Uh, have, we, have they ever done that on NXT before? They do it a lot on the main the main roster. No, I, know, I don't but, think they have, uh, to be honest. Not that, not that I can yeah. remember in, you know... No, not no. I can remember. Hmm. So yeah, um, I thought NXT was okay. Um, in comparison to uh, in comparison to Raw, it was the best show of the year. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> just a little bit of just a, a little bit of something. Uh, there's a vignette for uh, Frankie who's going to be debuting uh, on April 13th, which is the first Tuesday that. edition of um, NXT, and that is Ty Valkyrie because Ty Valkyrie. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's dog. About that. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Good Yikes. Stuff. So uh, let's move on to AEW Dynamite, which was a good show again this week. Uh, really enjoyed it. Just kicked off with a really good um, singles match between Christian Cage making his Dynamite debut, taking on Frankie Kazarian. Two, you know, real, really great veterans. You know, having a just a brilliant match. Uh, Christian came out on top because, you know, it's his debut. He was always going to. But um, it's definitely a match that I would like to see again. Cool. And that was good. Yep. Um, sorry, I'm just, uh, just, having a, just reading, the, reading through my notes here. Um, QT Marshall and Cody Rhodes had a match. Uh, this was sort of like a it was an unsanctioned exhibition match, so not something that was going to affect the the rankings in AEW. Um, it basically just caused a bit of a, an implosion of the Nightmare Family. Turned QT Marshall heel, um, and it was good. It basically, they, they had a, you know, they were having a, a decent match, and then it all just sort of broke down. Um, bit of a back and forth brawl. Um, Anthony Agogo was uh, was in there. Mm. Um, yeah. the British boxer, Olympic bronze medalist. Um, mm. He's sort of doing some stuff in AEW now, which is cool. Great to see. Um, he, he took a nice, uh, he, he gave Cody Rhodes a nice body shot, but it was good. A couple of pile drivers on uh, on the stairs as well. And then just nice. as he was about to pile drive Cody Rhodes, Red Velvet came down um, uh, and she was basically like, what are you doing? You know, supposed to be a friend and all that sort of stuff. And QT yeah. Marshall and the rest of his heel buddies Retreated to the back, so that's good. Cool. Um, oh, that's, that's good. Cool little vignette with the uh, all ego Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky. Um, you know they're sort of not having uh, any of you know AEW's you know overlooking of them, and they're going to be a tag team, and that's going to be a match on Elevation next week. Awesome. Uh, then we had John Moxley versus um, former NXT upstart Cesar Bononi. Oh yeah, um, he's right. you know seemingly doing a he's on NXT a bit he's sort of uh, buddy buddying up with um, Dolph Ziggler's brother uh, Ryan Nemeth. Oh yeah, and that was a fine match. You know, obviously ended up with John Moxley winning, and yeah, yeah, won versus submission. Um, you know, by submission, and yeah, another win for John Moxley. He's got an insane record in AEW. Um, mm. A win loss record there. Uh, cool nice. backstage segment with the pinnacle. MJF was sort of uh, revealing some stuff to them. Uh, basically, that they, they were going to have their own locker room. They were going to go into the locker room, and then the inner circle were there. Really cool, like picture um, moment there, where they opened the door and Jericho and the rest of the inner circle were stood there. You know, like looking menacing. Like, yeah, this is our turf, motherfuckers. <laughs> when there was a big brawl <laughs> between the pinnacle and the inner circle, which was great. And I'm really yeah. looking forward to you know that inevitable, inevitable match. Um, but yeah, there was you know then we had uh, we had a trios match, really really good trios match. Uh, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers taking on uh, Laredo Kid and the Lucha Brothers. Is Pac just like not around at the minute? Is he injured or something? Because I'm not, I'm not Austin, sure. Because they've drafted so. Laredo Kid in um, yeah. to team up with um, the uh, with the Lucha Bros as opposed to Pac. 
Hmm. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but a good match. Really, really good match. Um, you know, it, really good back and forth between Laredo Kid and Kenny Omega to finish the match. Um, Kenny Omega hits the uh, the one-winged angel, picks up the win, but um, really, really good. Cool. Really, really good match. Uh, John Moxley came out afterwards. Obviously, he's you know still on a quest for the AEW World Championship. So that was cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me add Hikaru Shida and Ty Conti. Uh, Ty Conti, mm-hmm. currently the number one contender for the AEW Women's World Championship, uh, took on Nyla Rose and Ali with the bunny. That was a good match yeah. as well. Um, I'm really impressed with Ty Conti at the minute. Really, really good. She's come on mm-hmm. leaps and bounds since her time in NXT. I think she's, you know, because she's been given time to actually to do stuff. And, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's, she's come on leaps and bounds. She looks the part. Yeah. She wrestles the part. And, yeah, I could see her definitely as a champion in future. Do I think she takes it off Ikaru Shida? No, I don't. But um, yeah. I could, I can, I could see her with it definitely down the line. But she's, she's, she's doing really well at the minute. I mean, they didn't win. Uh, the Bunny and Nyla Rose did win. Shut up. So I'm looking, <laughs> looking at AEW News and I started talking. <laughs> okay. Oh, right, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, so matches um, announced for next week's Dynamite. Uh, John Moxley and the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, are going to take on AEW Champion Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. So that'll be good oh. in a trios match. Cool. Uh, the Bunny, the Blade, and the Butcher are going to take on Ty Conti, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson of the Dark Order. Nice. Nice. And negative one as well, actually. <laughs> That's good. <cool. laughs> uh, Darby Allen defending the TNT Championship against J.D. Drake. Inner Circle are returning. Jurassic Express versus Bear Country. Uh, there's a little bit of a backstage segment with them where um, Marco Stunt and Veil Diddy had like a King Kong tattoo. And that match is brought to you by uh, Godzilla versus King Kong, apparently. So there's oh. some sort yeah. of standard sponsorship type thing going on there. Fair enough. Um, nice. The main event was Arcade Anarchy as Miro and Kip Sabian took on uh, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy of Best Friends. Really good match. Uh, a lot mm. of no disqualifications, a lot of arcade machines around ringside, which was cool. Yeah, was um, yeah. Some of them working, some of them not actually arcade machines, but it was it was really, really good. Uh, Miro looked an absolute monster in this match. He really did. Yeah. Um, which is exactly how Miro should look. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, the match finished with the returning... Uh, Trent, he got dropped off by his mum, Sue, which I thought was great, by the way. <laughs> really, really great way to bring Trent back. And, yeah. um, you know, he got involved in the match. And also, Chris Statlatner also returned. She came up through one of the, like, sort of alien grabber machines. Yeah. And cool. uh, she sort of reignited that feud that she was having with Penelope Ford. And I really yeah, liked that as well. So it was a really good way to, to do those two returns. Um, without spoiling them in advance, which is something WWE probably needs to take note of. But yeah, yeah great to see Chris Stalana back. Great to see uh, Trent back and best friends pick up the victory. Um, I just hope now that this is the end of this and that Miro can branch out and do his own thing and be the monster that he's, uh, you know, he has been. Yes, good. Yeah, definitely. But really good stuff. Uh, good episode of Dynamite this week, I thought. Um, it always feels like a big occasion when they have these like these matches that mean something. Because you, you feel mm. like Arcade Anarchy was really to end the feud between uh, Miro and Kip Sabian and the best friends. And it felt like a really great way to do it. So obviously it all started with, you know, the arcade machine being destroyed when Miro and Kip Sabian were doing the whole, you know, sort of uh, stag do bachelor party thing on Dynamite. Yeah. And it sort of progressed from there. Um, it's been a really fun feud, but yeah, I hope it's over now. Yeah. Yeah. Needs to be. But no, it's good yeah. that Miro's getting a push. Or, he look, or he's looking at looking at a monster at least. Yeah, they did allude to it on Dynamite. They mentioned that he he uh, was undefeated um, since mm. uh, debuting in AEW. So hopefully now Good. we'll start seeing the Miro that we all want to see, and he'll be booked in the correct way going forward. So yeah, back to you, Steve. Cool. Good. Good stuff. Yeah, sounds like a good show. I will watch it. Just haven't had chance so far. So um, SmackDown was okay. Um, <laughs> So Gable and Otis pick up a win. They teamed up with um, Ziggler and Rude to face the Street Profits and uh, Dom and Rey Mysterio in a eight-man tag, whatever you want to call it. But yep. yeah, they picked up the win. Uh, they're looking pretty strong going into this uh, going into this title match that we are getting next week on SmackDown. So uh, just covering that off, 
So next week's SmackDown is called SmackDown WrestleMania. So it's almost like an unofficial third night. <laughs> night three at WrestleMania. Great. <laughs> so what they are what they are doing is uh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Oh, is, is that going on... to be on SmackDown next week? Oh, okay. Really? As is the oh. SmackDown tag titles? Yes. So in that battle royal, interestingly, you've got um, Jey Uso, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. King Corbin. Uh, so there's a few names in there. We've got this here if you want me to uh, go down them. Go for it. Uh, we've got Akira Tazawa, Angel Garza, Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak, Elias, Eric from Biker Madis, uh, Grant Metalik, uh, Humberto Carrillo, Zachary Mariker, Jey Uso, Galisto, King Corbin, Lindsay Dorado, Mace, Murphy, Mustafa Ali, Ricochet, Shelton Benjamin, Shinsuke Nakamura, Slapjack, T-Bar, and Tucker. Tucker. Remember him? Tucker! Okay. <laughs> I don't know um, new yeah, that's happening, that's happening I don't think next any week, of those so people win it. <laughs> no. You think someone someone comes in? I think Alistair Black in. will come come back and win. You wish. Yeah, so there was some there was some well, there was something this week wasn't there. Uh, so Alistair Black posted a picture on his Instagram. Uh and it had some sort of I don't know whether it was cryptic or whatever, but the big thing about this that people notice is so Alistair Black's Instagram pictures are usually black and white they're all black yeah. and white apart from this new one that was in color so mm. almost like a you know i am here guys and i might be back who knows mm. that would be well, cool i really the cool. rumor is, is he's him, been dealing with some niggly injuries yes yeah 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 coming back and winning the Just, answer to the giant memorial battle royal although it means literally fuck all it would be a good thing for him to come back and win yeah do you remember it in, would, uh, yeah remember when mojo wally won it that was cool did he win it? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, because fucking Gronk yeah, Gronked him, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? I Remember mean, his I entrance when he danced? That was amazing. Oh god. <laughs> oh, god. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the good thing is if you know, if Alistair Black is going to win it, at least it's on um main roster TV rather than like a pre show. Yeah, true. So if he is gonna win it, is there's there's probably more eyes on it. What would probably. be cool is if they made it so um if like the winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, yep, they get that they get that like plastic trophy plastic or whatever. Trophy. Yeah. But they also get a title shot of some st- of some degree at WrestleMania, like in one of the mid card titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it mean something, hmm. definitely. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, next week SmackDown is SmackDown WrestleMania. Apparently, we're, we're going to get the SmackDown tag team titles defended there as well with those four teams hmm. that I've mentioned uh, involved. Okay. So Sorry. yeah. Uh, right, so let's do this. What was Seth Rollins wearing? Oh, <laughs> in my favourite segment right now. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. So, this looked like an explosion in a pastel paint factory. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So basically you've got pink, purple, light blue sort of colours, uh, like a tie-dye like effect. Yeah, yeah. So you've got this suit on, the jacket and the trousers, tie dye. Just there's only one man that can pull it off, and that man is Seth Rollins. Um, he was wearing a lilac shirt with it and a pink tie. Lovely. Uh, but the main bit for me that I noticed, and is what we like to call in the industry, um, matching your leathers. So his black shoes matched his black belt, which matched his black wanking glove. Perfect. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. You don't want to be mixing your leathers up, people. Now, you don't want to be wearing brown shoes and a black belt and a white wanking glove. You've got to have it all the same colour. So, you know, follow Seth. He's the fashionista. What a man. What a man. (laughs) Yes. Only that guy could pull it off. So, yeah, that was uh, what uh, what Seth Rollins wore. Cool. There you go. Excellent. Very cool. See, um... Probably the highlight of SmackDown for me. But yeah. There we go. Yeah, very no, good. Um, <laughs> nice outfit. Um, nice. Then we had um, Natalia squashed Shayna Baszler. Like literally, it was like less than two minutes. Uh, yeah, probably even kind less of than a, l- a minute. Yeah, a lucky roll up. I never called it a squash. Just like a. That's a nothing mm, roll up. Thing. But it was yeah. one of them. It was kind of like Natalia did a roll up, and then Shayna turned it back into. She was like kind of rolled it, and then it went back the other way, and that was it. It was over and done. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, you just got an absolute, just a, a typical kind of, you know, we're heading towards a pay per view sort of thing. So the Riot Squad, remember them? 
They came out to the aid of Natalia and Tamina, who were then being beaten up by Jackson Baszler. Uh, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose then came out, and then Naomi and Lana came out. And uh, I think at the end, Natalia and um, Tamina were the ones that kind of stood tall. Yeah, yeah. Time. So uh, I'm kind of okay with this because. They've got like actual women's acting for a change, not just made up mm. teams. So, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it. Yeah. At least they're showing, you know, they're having actual teams there. Yeah, just put yeah, Payne yeah. and Billy Kay back together as well. Yeah, why not? All will be fine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the next bit. So Sammy Zayn brings out Logan Paul. So Logan Paul is there. I was wrong, Sonny. You were right. He did arrive. Uh, his red carpet arrival for the. Uh, the trailer of Sami Zayn's documentary, which I really, I really hope that goes on the, on the network. <laughs> I really hope they put it on there as one of these spoof documentaries, because if it's done like it looks in the trailer and there is like an hour, hour and a half documentary, it will be gold. Yeah. It looks like it could be absolutely brilliant. There's a couple of really funny bits on it where um, in the trailer, they ask Sami Zayn, are you a flat earther? And he's like, I don't know, are we? Should we get into that? Well, yeah. yeah, we might get into that. We might get into that. Like, let's, let's, like... let's be flat earthers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, quite, it's quite funny. He's like, this is the second um, time I've been asked about that. Is there a connection? Mm, yeah, flat earth. yeah. Because that's the yeah. second time I've been asked. Maybe we should look into that. Maybe we should be into that. <laughs> don't know. Yeah. Um, it's about, it just uh... looks really good because obviously it's filmed from the perspective of his film crew. So, you know, yeah. I think it'd look, it, it, it would be, I really hope it goes onto the next. I think they will. Really. I think they will do something. Yeah, so. I think they will. It looks like there's, there's footage because it looks like they've they've done they've done stuff that you haven't seen on the TV for the documentary. So yeah, yeah I think it will be on there. <laughs> like so I yeah, said, um, Paul came out to the ring. Sorry, go on, Finn. I was gonna say I like how um, one of them was he's been screwed over by the referees, and now he has a fear of zebras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've been screwed over so many times, and now I have a fear of zebras. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's just brilliant. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Logan Paul came out to the ring, and do you know what? For a for a change, I didn't hate this this segment. That's I fine. usually don't like these sort of in ring kind of sit down. Let's have a chat, and then it'll end in a, in a brawl. Um, it kind of ends with uh, with Kevin Owens coming out, giving Sammy a, a stunner, but then later on, Sammy attacks Kevin Owens backstage. So uh, yeah, that should be a really good match at Mania. They, I- them two know how to. If, if there's two wrestlers in the current uh, roster that know how to put a match on, it's them too. Yeah, I look so, forward to uh, uh, yeah. I look forward to Brett Thomas coming to our, our pre show streams, you know, <laughs> saying, I was right all along. <laughs> I'm talking yeah. to you, Logan Paul's yeah. here. He was, he was. This Unbelievable. Is, he knew, he Credit knew all along. You, Insider information going on. Yeah. <laughs> Brett Thomas is Logan Paul. Come on, yeah, we, we've, be, we've right? established this. Yeah, two first names, like Logan Paul, this. same guy. <laughs> um, Carmella's back she lost to uh, Bianca Belair um, yeah. let's move on I had an um, interaction between Billy Kay and um, Carmella briefly yeah there was yeah I don't know what that was necessarily about yeah whether... Who knows? I was expecting Billy Kay to then be there in that match hmm. after that but she wasn't so um Apollo Crews has announced that his match against Big E is going to be a Nigerian drum fight. Right, okay. Which, to me, basically sounds like a no-holds-barred match. Pretty much. There'll be drums. That's what it sounds like to me. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah, who knows. So you think there'll be like people around the ring playing like drums and stuff? I don't know. I think the way it was being described was that he, he will... You know, he will get beaten up so badly it will sound like the banging of a drum, sort of thing. That's, sure. I think, that's where they were going with it. It just sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a, a no holds barred match, street fight, something different. Just going back mm. to match stipulations, stipulations um, it was announced on Raw that Braun versus Shane is going to be a cage match. It's cage oh, match, yeah. 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 I think I said Shane. that last week. Give some, this is going to do Braun versus Shane to jump off. Yeah, something for Shane to jump off. Yeah. Fair point. 100%, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or get pushed off or thrown off or whatever. Either way, he's coming off it. Yeah. Or sweat off it. Or slip <laughs> off it because he's so sweaty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fine, no, 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 it's fine. No, it's fine. Good. Uh, well pointed out. I remember just after I come away from the Raw stuff, I was like, ah, I didn't mention that, but never mind. Um, and then we finished the night with Daniel Bryan versus Jay Uso in a street fight. 
Um, yeah. It was okay. It was fine. Uh, Daniel Bryan wins, looking strong going into next week. He immediately, as soon as the bell rings, he's, uh, he just goes and attacks Edge, who's who's at the comms table uh, for that match. Daniel Bryan then um, stares down Roman Reigns at the top of the ramp. Um, this bit made me laugh as he was heading towards the ramp, the big sort of office gamer chair that Reigns was sat on. He just picked it up and just lobbed it. Yeah. <laughs> threw it at Daniel Bryan. That's well worth a look. Um, he missed and then uh, he hit thank Reigns God. with a running knee and then uh, put him, uh, yeah, thank God, uh, and then hit him with a running knee and then put him into yes lock onto the, on the ramp uh, and wouldn't let go. Officials had to come up and break it up. Daniel Bryan looked like a, a man possessed. Yeah, I like so, uh, yeah, I, I actually think um, I'm 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 not totally against this triple threat. I think you know each guy's got their own thing going into it, and Daniel Bryan looks like yeah, he looks he looks like a mean motherfucker. Yeah, good promo from Edge as well. Mm. Yeah, on. the start. At the start, mm. yeah, yeah, really good, really good. Yeah, I don't think Daniel so, yeah. Bryan's going to win it, but I do think he takes the pinfall, and so that Edge and Roman can like continue their feud. So like, oh, you never pinned me, you didn't beat me for the championship or mm. whatever. Something like that. Be an interesting yeah. one. Mm. Yeah, I'm look. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. WrestleMania's taking shape. I mean, TV might be shit, but WrestleMania looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, you know, the cards. The I mean. NXT, the, the card for NXT is the, the both nights is is ridiculous. Um, it's worth noting I mean, with NXT that NXT UK actually has a um, oh yeah like a like a like a mini takeover type show next week as well. The prelude, yeah. Oh, cool. That's the prelude, cool. yeah. I'll check that out. I'll check that out. But, I love night wrestling. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, for for example, like night one. I know we're going to do this on the on the pre-show for the pre-show, but like night one of of Stand and Deliver, uh, you've got. Pete Dunn versus Kushida. Um, <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> um, Pete Dunn versus Kushida. MSK versus Grizzled Young Vets versus uh, Legado Del Fantasma in a tag match. That's going to be epic. Uh, you've then got the six man Gauntlet Eliminator. Walter versus Champa. Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez. That's Jesus. Night, one. <laughs> night two Ember Moon, Shotzi Blackheart versus The Way, Candice Lorraine, Indy Hartwell. Adam Cole versus Carlo Riley, Johnny Gargano versus the Gauntlet Eliminator winner, uh, Jordan Devlin versus um, Santos Escobar in a ladder match, and then Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross. Wow. Yeah. I mean, what, that is what a night. Two unbelievable <laughs> nights. <laughs> Insane. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, as it stands, uh, night one of Mania, you've got Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair, Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. Bad Bunny versus The Miz, The New Day versus AJ Styles and Omos, Braun Strowman versus Shane in a cage match, uh, Cesaro versus Seth, and then night two is the triple threat we've just been talking about for the Universal Championship, Oscar versus Rhea Ripley, The Fiend versus Randy Orton, Big E versus Apollo Crews, um, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, and Riddle versus Sheamus. Four top nights of wrestling, hopefully. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, very, very good nights of wrestling. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be, it's gonna be a, a really good week. I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be really good. But guys, don't forget. Um, so Wednesday night and Thursday night will be starting at 9 p.m. Pre-show that's UK time. Pre-show before the pre-show for both NXT. So for NXT Takeover Night One and Night Two, uh, the WrestleMania Not Special European Eliminator. Time. Not European time. Though. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> And then on the Friday, the Games and Graps Eliminator special will be coming out. And um, then Saturday night, 9 o'clock, again, we'll be doing the WrestleMania night one pre-show before the pre-show. And then the Sunday night, we'll be doing night two pre-show before the pre-show. So because of all the stuff that we're doing next week, there's no um, standard episode of the podcast, but you will still get a lot of Games and Graps stuff. And then we'll be back. Uh, a week next Saturday with episode 139 as normal. Yes. 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 So lots to look forward to. Um, it's going to be great. So definitely go follow us on um, YouTube, youtube.com forward slash games graps. And also um, go follow us on all the social medias, which is at games and graps. And that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. But for now, this has been episode 138 of the games and graps podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts on all podcast services everywhere. 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 
All right. And youtube.com forward slash games graps and facebook.com forward slash games and graps. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sonny G and I've been here with Finn Steele. Goodbye. And Steve. See you later. And we will see you next Wednesday for night one of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver pre-show before the pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. And we'll see you next week for a heap of content. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Baseball. Sports. Fucking baseball. <laughs> Fucking baseball. Oh, shut up, just enjoy gaming.